because we keep talking, it's quite intimidating. <laughs> when it goes quiet like that. Um, all right, well, welcome to the Construction Industry Capacity Building Workshop 2024. Um, we are going to change things up so that we can facilitate the incorrect email that was sent out this morning. Um, and uh, so we're going to move quite quickly through... Sorry, I need a microphone. One, two. Uh, right. We're going to move quite quickly through the, the program. Um, instead of tackling just Pompeii this morning, we're going to tackle a cross-section of everything. So we're going to keep questions and answers to the bare minimum, if at all, so that you get a good cross-section of what we're looking at across the board, across all of the states. Because as your contractors, you're going to want to make a decision as to whether you want to participate in which uh, civil works contract uh, that comes out. So, uh, so we're changing it up slightly. The program is going to be slightly different, um, but we're going to facilitate you guys to make sure that you get the best information that you can. And uh, yeah. So, without any further ado, Shankar. All right, thanks, Martin. Uh, so, morning again, everyone. Uh, thank you all for coming this morning. Um, the output that we're seeing this morning is very heartening. Um, we um, have a pretty extensive program to share with you all um, over the next four days. Uh, today we're going to be starting with the ADB Strip program and tomorrow we will mark uh, the entire portfolio. So uh, we have a pretty exciting program for you all. Um, we are also broadcasting live stream on our TCNI YouTube page. Um, comments and questions are welcome. On the YouTube page, so a couple, uh, you know, house uh, house cleaning messages. We want to encourage as much comments and questions as possible on the YouTube page. You just insert your, your questions on the comment section. We may not be able to answer it in real time, but at the end of this entire seminar, we're going to be producing a report with all the questions, recording all the questions, and having written responses, and that will be uploaded on the web page after publicly so everyone can see, all right? Um, we have members here from the World Bank, from ADB, from TCNI, and of course, the most important, which is the local contracting community here, all right? So, um, uh, Martin De Beer is the team lead for SMEC, uh, and he's gonna be our um, MC for the day. Um, so let me just ask Martin just to start the program, uh, and we'll have the actual welcome. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Fantastic. All right. So we are officially starting the program at this time, and uh, I'd like to ask uh, Dixon if you can come up and just give us some welcomes to to the folk that are here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And good morning everyone. Uh, on behalf of Secretary Carl Abyss, I would like to welcome all participants to this procurement seminar, which is being held for the benefit of construction contractors and suppliers who are interested in participating in this road program being implemented by TCNI. Special welcome to those contractors who are joining us virtually from other Everson State as well as other countries. My respect to participants from the World Bank, SMEC, consultants, and from colleagues at TCNI and other departments of the Everson National Government. TCNI is the implementing agency for three major road projects funded by Asian Development Bank and the World Bank. These projects will in involve an investment of over 100 million in improving roads and bridges in the four states of the Everson. We expect that the road sector will also attract funding under the conduct of uh, free association with the United States both for capital investment and maintenance. These contract projects will also be open to international competitive bidding. We 
are therefore expecting to see an investment of over 150 million in the road sectors in the next five years. In order to implement these programs, we recognize the need to build solid partnership with local, regional, and international contractors. This procurement seminar is an impo important step in building this partnership. It will provide an opportunity to understand the requirements of our development partners so that you can participate in the bidding process for these projects. We are fortunate to have a team of experts from SMEC, uh, consultants who are also fully experienced in the bidding requir requirements of the Edison Pact. We also have a team of procurement experts from the World Bank. Do not hesitate to ask questions or to seek clarification as needed to, so that you can leave the seminar with an, uh, confidence that you can participate in the bidding process for these road projects. And in closing, let me wish you all a successful seminar. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Martin. Um, I don't have much to say, um, but I would just like to uh, express my own uh, personal appreciation uh, to all of you, um, both um, the contractors who are <coughs> with us here physically present, and I believe there are a number of them joining us um, virtually from other countries. Um, we at um, DTCNI, um, we've worked very, very hard over the last few years uh, to try to bring this road program um, to a stage where it is now, um, where we are actually inviting bids uh, from uh, contractors you know, to actually do the works. And um, so we're very happy because um, we think that this is a real, very important starting point. When I came here, I think it was in 2018, and um, I think the guy who was responsible for bringing me here is here. Nice <laughs> 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 to see you, Rob. Anyway, uh, when I came here in 2018, what, that was one of the first things that, that, that I recognized, that we have to do something about the road infrastructure. Um, and um, we're very fortunate that the World Bank and um, Acknowledge Entity and uh, Nick that they were the first actually to assist us with the prime project, uh, with the funding. We will, by the way, be going out to bid very soon um, on the prime project, you know, what we call the urgent uh, priority works. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a great day for me, um, as I said, and a great day for the country, because um, as we have seen, our roads are really, really, really in bad shape. Every day I complain to Dixon, our assistant secretary for infrastructure, about the particular, I have to travel along the second way back road. I don't know how many of you travel along that road, but the potholes are now so huge that, you know, I mean, I worry about my old vehicle, Dixon. <laughs> you know, um, we had a road, a road maintenance seminar um, a couple of um, weeks ago, and I think one of, the, um, one of the very important points that came out is that very, very little is being done, um, both in terms of new investment and in terms of maintenance on our road network. So this really um, creates a great opportunity for us um, to work together, um, both you know, the national government, our development partners, and our construction industry, our contractors, to really come to grips with this problem and um, to, to transform our road network over the next five years, as I think Nixon mentioned, I mean, there's probably going to be an investment of at least 150 million, maybe more. Um, depending on if we can attract even other development partners to, to assist us. Um, so let's, let's move ahead. I mean, this is clearly, we've also talked a lot about the need for us to engage more with contractors, and especially our local contractors, because we really want to see our, our local contractors participate in these projects. You know, we don't want um, just to see um, contractors from, from outside, but we want a mix, and ideally we'd like to see a mix. Uh, the outside contractors, yes, the expertise that you bring, and the local contractors, the local knowledge, and so on, that you, and the ability also, you know, to make sure that the projects 
um, really benefit the local economy. Um, so with that, uh, I'm going to say I, I also wish you all a very um, successful seminar. And I, uh, joining uh, uh, Dixon, the Assistant Secretary, to encourage you also to make it be as interactive as possible. Ask questions, raise issues, and um, don't, don't hesitate to place anything that's not clear. Uh, because what we want to see is a successful bidding process for those projects that are ready out to bid and those projects that will be coming out to bid over the coming months, certainly the prime project. Um, we, want, we really want to see a successful um, bidding process and uh, I want to welcome Larry Adams um, to this meeting you are late. Anyway, so you're welcome. <laughs> One of our big local contractors, after, of course, and he's already doing a number of projects for us, uh, the national government. So welcome, Larry. And uh, so with that, then, uh, Martin, let me hand back over to you. Thank you all very much. Right, so um, we just got to put across small changes, as I said. Um, I'm handing over to uh, Peter Ward, who is our regional director for SNEC. He's going to give you a small introduction of who we are, and our, um, so that you know who's been doing the designs, and he's going to be supervising you when you successfully bid for this project. Um, Peter? Thanks, Mark. I'll plug you in. Here's a microphone. Right, thanks for the uh, introduction, uh, Martin. So, look, I'm just going to give you uh, a quick overview about Smith as a company. As Martin mentioned, um, we've uh, worked closely with the department to design the sub-projects that comprise uh, this wider project and preparing the bid documents um, that, that you're all express some interest in bidding on and ultimately be um serving the construction stage by supervising the works as the uh, engineer under the fitted base contract. So who is SMEC? Uh, we have origins dating back um, over 70 years, 75 years uh, to be precise to this year at the moment. And it's off the back of the Snowy Mountains uh, hydroelectric scheme, uh, a major undertaking uh, at the time it was the biggest uh, civil infrastructure project in the southern hemisphere uh, in Australia, in the southeast corner, um, just south of the capital city, Canberra. So over this time we've established ourselves as a trusted partner in major transport and energy infrastructure projects around the world with extensive project experience in the Pacific region in particular, as well as beyond. Our design leaders and specialist teams draw upon vast expertise gained from delivering projects in a wide range of environments, from some of the world's most remote locations, such as Micronesia, to densely populated urban areas, such as Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. Our commitment extends beyond project boundaries, with a globally connected workforce operating in more than 40 countries and strong local relationships, we're a diverse team of professionals dedicated to leaving a lasting positive impact on the communities we serve, <coughs> ensuring present and future generations can thrive. Our long-standing presence in the Pacific region uniquely positions the company to provide valuable insights and expertise to the Federated States of Micronesia. Our commitment to sustainable and resilient infrastructure aligns perfectly with the Sustainable Road Infrastructure Investment Project, or SHRI. I'd now like to play you a video. This was released uh, five years ago in commemoration of the 70th year anniversary of SMEC and provides provide a good background to the company.
So just off the back of that, first 25 years around the uh, Snowy Mountains hydroelectric scheme in the 1970, uh, SMEC was uh, privatised. And uh, that hydro scheme in 1967 was recognised as one of the seven civil engineering wonders of the modern world. Uh, fast forward to now, um, uh, it's expanded uh, a lot and in 2016 uh, joined the Savannah Durong uh, group of companies. So, um, along, along with the other groups, uh, the, the total organisation has uh, a total talent pool of 16,500 and some uh, people working across 120 plus offices in 40 countries. Just a snapshot um, of SMEC along with other partner companies there, including the parent company, Savannah Jerome. Um, so this is a cross-section of horizontal and vertical engineering firms as well as architects, um, environmentalists and com complementary disciplines as well. Uh, some of the multilateral organisations uh, that we work with are here, certainly not all of them, but um, the most prominent featured ones, particularly for SMEC in the Pacific region, uh, are the Asian Development Bank uh, and the World Bank. Uh, footprints uh, across the globe, so no surprise um, with it stemming out of, of the uh, Australia, New Zealand and, and Pacific uh, region, uh, but reaching across um, the wider Asia area into Africa and also with um, a few satellite um, offices uh, located in the Americas and the UK. Um, as far as awards and rankings, at the moment, um, the Savannah Drone Group of Companies uh, sits number 23 out of the top 225 international design firms. This is according to the engineer, engineering news records, which is more or less the, the benchmark for big consulting firms uh, globally. Um, and number 33 for global design firms. So the difference there between them is uh, the top... Uh, 225 is for what is done uh, outside of the home country and uh, top 150 including that as well, all locations. Uh, very recently, three weeks ago, um, SMIC was awarded the winner of the large, large firm of the year uh, in Australia um, at the Consult Australia Award, uh, Award, so very proud of that achievement and amongst the others listed here. Our core, core values, um, people, as one of the speakers in the video emphasised, um, work with other people, uh, really wouldn't have, have a business here. 
professionalism, integrity, purpose, and partnership uh, are all important values to the company. Um, acting in an ethical uh, manner with integrity is very important to the, the company. That extends to anti-bribery and corruption training, which is mandatory uh, across the whole business and extends also into our contracts um, with, for example, sub-consultants and service providers. Our core markets, roads and highways, which is relevant to this project that we're here in Micronesia for, rail, metro and uh, TOD, which is transit orientated uh, development, hydropower and dams, especially off the, um, uh, the Snowy Mountain scheme that you've seen there, uh, renewable energy and aviation. So particularly in roads and highways, um, we look to draw off our expense, uh, extensive expertise in bridges, road alignment and pavement design, uh, and geotechnical solutions. Um, this particular interchange is an example of one that was uh, built and constructed in South Africa. And we're involved throughout the, uh, the project life cycle on, on our project. So our global team provides advice, planning, design, supervision and project managed services uh, for road infrastructure works throughout the entire life cycle of the design from feasibility to construction and extending into operations and maintenance uh, as well as client side services such as asset management. Just to highlight some key things going on um, in the SMEC group uh, in the Pacific at the moment, so I've actually got the Shrip project here uh, in Micronesia, which is um, an image uh, on the left-hand side of your screen. This is from Cosrai, uh, looking over the educational facility in Total Town, um, which is uh, right on uh, one of the sub-projects um, as part of the documents for Shrip at the moment. Uh, the top right uh, is Munda Airport in the Solomon Islands. So the runway, taxiway and apron were all designed by SMEC and <coughs> then uh, under the FIT, FITIC Red Book supervised uh, by our team as well. Uh, and in addition, you'll see with the green roof structure, there's a new terminal building. Um, that was under a FITIC Yellow Book uh, design and construct, which we also, as the engineer, supervised. Uh, construction for. Uh, bottom right, King's Road upgrades, ADB funded in Fiji, and in the bottom left, the Central Cross Island uh, Road upgrades, uh, also funded by ADB in Samoa. 20 kilometre roads <coughs> divided into two civil works packages with the first underway at the moment. So, thank you. Uh, that takes, takes me to the end of the brief about Smith. So at this stage we're going to now delve directly into the different bid packages for the projects. Uh, as mentioned by Martin this morning, uh, we're going to be talking on a high overview of all of the projects across. Um, and of course comments are welcome at the end. We're going to be going into deeper detail into each one of the projects this afternoon. Um, but if there's any specific questions you will have on the overview this morning, just feel free. Okay, so um, I think uh, one of the things which I'd like to just make very clear here is the strip project that we've been working on for the last uh, um, almost two years, a year and a half now, um, has been funded by the Asian Development Bank. All right, so please don't be confused that in the room we've got World Bank, um, they just need the training. Um, sorry, I'm just kidding. Anybody from World Bank? Sorry. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, so thanks very much to Asian Development Bank on this. Uh, I think we need to put that on record, and that's, that's really important. And they, 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 they're funding um, this investment project to the tune of between 30 and 40 million US dollars. All right, so if you want to write that down, um, we've got the um, part of this overview. I want to just 
walk us very quickly, 15, 20 minutes. I want to walk us through the general overview of the actual project. All right? So the actual, these are terrible because I can't see you if I have them on. And I can't see my screen if I have them off. So, uh, <laughs> forgive me. Um, <laughs> factor of age. Um, so basically, I want to walk us through the process of this project. The specific strip project because it, it needs to be separated from prime and score um, and the other projects we've got so many projects happening in Micronesia it's hugely exciting but we want to focus just on this one that we that we that has gone out to bid now which I think is one of the first ones yeah. of its kind and there are a couple of, 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 of uh, important changes differences to this which makes it more local centric all right um, compared to whatever else has happened in the country prior so, session one will bleed into session two. Uh, we're not going to stop for tea. Uh, feel free to get up if you need to go to the loo or if you need to go and get yourself a cup of coffee. Feel free to do that. It won't worry me at all. Um, we're not going to stop for tea. We're going to push right through till 12 o'clock and um, I will give you a chance to ask questions. Um, for our international uh, dial-in viewers, there is a 10 to 15 second lag on the, um, uh, on the, on the video. So just be aware that your questions won't be heard or seen initially straight away. Write them down and we will tackle them probably this afternoon in the afternoon session. So we have changed it up slightly. All right, let's move straight on to session number one. Session number one, the process. We've got a workflow of the project and the ultimate shortlisted roads for the civil works. We then have the different types of intervention, uh, whether it's a reconstruction of the road or a rehabilitation of an existing road, and then the pavement type, whether it's rigid or flexible, concrete or AC. This is the process. I'm just going to stand here so I can see the screen. I'm going to be in your way. Is that right? Okay. So this is um, this is the process here. There we go. All right, we were given a long list, which we went out to consultations with that long list of roads across, and it's all the secondary and main roads and some of the urban roads, uh, across all four states. From that long list that we were given, we did site investigations, we um, came out, we established in country, and uh, we did a visual condition survey, um, we did the roughness index of those roads, we took videos of all the roads so that all of our international SMAC staff had access to actually visually being able to see the roads, uh, we did traffic counts across all of the states. We did axle load surveys across all the states. We did a uh, cadastral, which really ended up being an involuntary resettlement screening process to make sure we weren't damaging any property where we didn't have to. Um, we took a look at the utilities. I will cover that in more detail later on how we dealt with those. Um, and then the general community consultations and an initial environmental assessment. Now, the general community consultations and the initial environmental assessment added one or two projects to the long list, which we took into consideration. We took all of these site investigations into consideration, and um, our procurement expert and uh, MCA expert sitting here, um, uh, Sergey, together with our economists and the team, put together an, uh, a multi-criteria analysis together with a socio-economic cost-benefit analysis of the long list of roads. What did we get out of that? We just got an, an order of importance, ultimately, all right, for each state. Um, and that prioritized list of roads for each state then needed to have a level of intervention. For example, Chuk, it had to be concrete and it had to have uh, uh, drainage included. Um, some of the roads in Pompeii, it was the level of intervention is merely going to be a rehabilitation of the existing. Let's rip it up, let's make it look, you know, we, we like to use the term, let's paint it black. All right? um, but let's make the subsurface correct, let's not just put black top over the top. Okay. Um, and whether it's a rigid, a flexible, or a combination of the two finished. So that's, that's what that process did and it ultimately came to a negotiations table where we negotiated a scope that we could deliver for the finances that ADB is giving to Micronesia for this project. All right? That is pretty much what this whole process on scoping did and that was the first um, eight months 
of the project spanning from August. We we had that on our table by um, by June last year, June July last year. The scope was done. Took us into the design phase, where we now had a clear set of which roads we were doing, what we were doing on those roads, and let's design it. Obviously, it went through the geotechnical process. So all the geotechnical investigations were done, topographical surveys were done. Those roads, uh, like uh, and bridges, like Ganya Bridge, bathymetric surveys were done, offshore surveys were done, uh, tidal surveys were done, and we then went into detailed safeguards. So that means detailed household surveys, consultations. We was th this poor country was so consulted out of this fight. All right, but we did all of that, and we came up with concept designs. Preliminary designs once those were approved, and then draft final designs for approval. So we've taken that step all the way through. It hasn't just been something that has, has happened. Um, and we've taken the local people's needs into consideration and once. Alright, moving across, we then did a full bill of quantities with cost estimates. So um, please don't blow those cost estimates or we're going to look bad. Um, technical specifications there are two documents. One is Ganya Bridge which is a structural one, and the other one is um, roads specific. Um, and they are each over 100 pages long. <laughs> so there's very, very clear technical specifications for every aspect of this project, all based on um, ASH2 and LRA form of structures. So it's American, it's in feet and inches, um, it, is, it is clearly local and what you're used to working with, no surprises. Final drawings were done. Um, procurement documents were prepared and the next couple of sessions, next couple of days, those procurement documents will be covered in detail. I'm not covering them here. You need to see what the projects are and decide whether you're coming back. All right? um, and a strategic procurement plan with civil works packages was drawn up. All right? um, I'll cover that shortly. Safeguards, all the necessary safeguards were put in place uh, as far as documentation goes and a full economic analysis to ensure that our economic rates of return still remain correct compared to what we've done in the MCA um, now that we had a final set of designs and cost estimates. Right, that took us down to what you all have on your tables now or on your desktops, laptops, all right, is the bidding documents. You've got the contracts, the standard bid documents, the SBDs. You've got the bill of quantities, all right, you've got a technical specification uploaded for each of the projects, drawings for each of the projects, supplementary information, which we chose to put several documents in there. If there's any documents that you feel are missing, you're welcome to put that in as a query officially through DTCI. If you, know, if, if you feel there's something that you need as far as supplementary information goes to assist you with putting your bid together, just ask, send us an email and, and we'll respond. And then the environmental, social, mitigation plan, which I've heard a lot of negative things about, people push back on that. I just want to say right now, no money gets released until the environmental social mitigation plan is approved by the banking fraternity that is releasing the money. So as much as we don't necessarily think that when we do a doctorate, we have to do mathematics, as I tell my daughter, just do it. All right? Because you're not going to get your doctorate if you don't do it. That's what the ESMP is. And if you do it badly, you won't get the job. All right? So, um, I, sorry, I just need to make that clear <laughs> to everybody because it, it's a frustration for me as well. And that brings us to today. The, uh, it's not really a pre-bid workshop, but you can, you can see it as part of the bidding process to assist you with the bidding process um, as we go forward. Which will take us into part two. That's not important now, that's going to happen um, when the project actually kicks off. Right, any questions? Good, moving on. Okay. Um, I'm going to do 15 minutes. We're going to have a short five minute break so that everybody can just keep their level of attention up. All right. This 15 minutes is just looking very briefly at the shortlisted sub projects that we came up with at the end of the day. I have structured the slides and all of the slides you're going to see going forward into the civil works packages. Right, and that's really important. So the Civil Works packages, it's one package with two lots, depending where you are. Chook is one package. It has three roads in it, 
but they all interlink and it's one package, no separate lots. And Ganya Bridge is a standalone package. However, don't be put off by that if you are teaming up or if you guys have the facility yourselves, we don't know that, but you, you may want to, uh, uh, if you have the capacity, you may want to tackle CW4 and CW5, which are both in yet as one package or as, as one, one proposal to it. But just bear in mind that we have got five very clear packages. CW1, Cosray State, we've got the Lady Causeway to Telfor Road, the Tuckland Sack to Bypass Road, two separate roads. CW2 is all of the roads here in Pompeii uh, that we've tackled. The first one is from the airport all the way through to basically uh, in the next intersection down outside the Asian Development Bank's offices. All right? That is the Capua East South Road, which we like to fondly refer to as the Causeway. 2B is P2, 3, and 4. All right? Um, that is Nantuaruk, uh, Palapala, please forgive my pronunciation, and Pix Road. Pix Road is all the way from the junction right through to the water tank. Okay? Even though it's known as two separate road names, that's the road we're talking about. It's one road. CW3 are the three roads, as I mentioned, in Chuk, which all intersect at an intersection um, at uh, uh, where you turn right to go down to the Blue Lagoon. Okay, So that's uh, fondly known as Truck Stop, through to Blue Lagoon. So we've got the Mormon Church in town, all the way through to that intersection, down to the Blue Lagoon, and then from that intersection, all the way up to the church, um, I think it might be a Catholic church. Anyway, the church up at the top in Wichita. So it kind of goes through, gets a bit raggedy, gets up to the top, and there's a there's a church up at the top, and we've stopped at that intersection in Wichita. CW4 roads in Yap State, we've got Tommel Road, um, and we've got Goggle Road. Goggle Road goes past the, uh, um, uh, past the College of Micronesia, and then on through past the stadium, through to the junction. Um, and Tommel Road uh, just links the Tar Road at the moment, about, uh, it's about, um, it's just over a, a mile just over a mile through to the little Tommel Town Centre. We've done quite a bit of work in the Tommel Town Centre, I'll cover that in a moment. And then we've got Ganya Bridge in Yap State, which is uh, it's, it's, it's a replacement of the existing old bridge that is, used to be known as the Bypass Bridge. Um, right. Graphically, this is Yap, alright? This is Goggle Road. Uh, I wonder if this will work. Can I point with this? Yes, I can. All right, so this is Goggle Road down here. Okay. This is Tommel Road down here. And this is Ganya Bridge over here. All right. Um, moving across to Chuk State, we're working from uh, west to east. Chuk, we've got, this is the road, this is the Mormon Church. It runs all the way down to the junction that I was talking about, into Blue Lagoon, and up through to Wichet. Okay. Kosrai. Kosrai. Um, this is the bypass road, not much work needs to be done on that. This is the Leilu uh, to Tofu Road, lots of work needs to be done on that. Okay, and then we move across to Pompeii. In Pompeii, we've got the, from the airport uh, entrance all the way through to um, just outside the ADB. Um, and we have, um, uh, let me just see where am I? And then we have the road coming up the hill, which I uh, think is here. This one's Nantualik and the, or was it the other way around? And that's Palapala. No, this is Nantualik and that's Palapala down there. And then we've got Pix Road. Like I said, running from the junction all the way around to the water tank. Okay. Um, right, moving on. Those are the roads. That's where they are. They're not a lot of them, but it's a fantastic spot for the country. Um, and also accessible for the local uh, capabilities that that, 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 <coughs> that Micronesia has to offer. What are our intervention types? Okay, what I've done is I've, I've lifted this out. We've got full reconstruction or we've got nearly rehabilitation. Okay. So <coughs> it's important that we that we understand when we talk about full reconstruction, we're talking about new drainage, we're talking about widening and reshaping. Too much shoulders, new structures, sidewalks, bus stops, laybars, level changes, importing of materials which you may have to get from offshore, especially in the case of Yap, spoil, demolition in the case of Game Bridge. Alright? Full reconstruction of what is there. If you look at the bottom of this page, 
one thing that is very critical to understand, even with full reconstruction, we are not changing the alignment of these roads. Okay? That's really important, and we are not impacting on people's properties. That's so really, really important, um, especially in Chuk, apparently. Um, so moving on to rehabilitation, what does that mean? We're going to be rehabilitating existing drainage. That means cleaning it out, fixing up where there's bits and pieces broken, uh, rehabilitating existing sidewalks, like for example, going down Palapalap Street, there's a sidewalk on the left-hand side. That needs rehabilitation. Pick it up, clean it up, put it back where it is. Um, we're, not re we're not widening the roads. We're not reshaping the roads. We're not changing the shoulders. We're not um, actually changing that road at all. We're replacing it with exactly what is there to a much better quality, a much higher standard. All right? Rehabilitating existing structures, and they're going to be minor level, minor level changes. We're not importing material. Those minor level changes are <clears throat> primarily going to be doing, done with AC or a little bit of the reconstruction of work that happens underneath, but we need to finish up with a road that has a horizontal and vertical set of curves that work according to the ASH2 standards for your road design speeds, which in urban areas is 15 miles per hour, and in the more rural areas is 20 to 25 miles per hour. Okay? I hate myself for saying that because when I drive on the roads at 20 miles per hour, it's horrible. All right, I don't want to get to a meeting lane because this place, it, yeah, it's always worse. Um, okay, Cosra, CW1A, and I'll run through each of them. But CW1A, there is a section on the Lady to Topple Road that gets flooded every year. That section has got full rehabilitation. The rest of that road is uh, sorry, full reconstruction. The rest of that road is rehab. Pompeii. We've got the Capua East South Road, which is the causeway. That section that gets inundated with uh, seawater and the king tides that you all know about, uh, closer to the airport. Full reconstruction. The rest of it is rehabilitation. Chuk, it's a full reconstruction road from start to finish. Um, yeah, Tomo Road, full reconstruction. Gogol Road, full reconstruction. And Ganya Bridge, we're taking what's there out, <coughs> disposing of it, and replacing it with something a lot bigger. Full reconstruction. All right, everything else is rehabilitation. Okay. Um, all right, I've still got five minutes. I've got two minutes to ask <coughs> if there's any questions. I will be covering these all in more detail, but are there any questions at this stage? No? Okay. We then have, so that's the first two items. Rehabilitation or reconstruction. All right, the next two items are what does that mean? What type of pavements are we looking at? Are we looking at a rigid pavement or are we looking at a flexible pavement? What sort of plant do you need to mobilize on site? Okay. Um, Cosrai is a combination of the two. Where it has been flooded, we need to make sure, unfortunately, that flooding happens in a river basin. So, other than moving that road to a completely different position, it will be flooded. <coughs> There's nothing we can do about that. So what we need to do is we need to minimize the impact of that flooding and maximize the longevity of that road surface once it does flood. All right? So we've looked at the drainage. We've done the best we can. Um, we've had our experts look at it, and we feel that it is going to be hugely improved. But because we are anticipating it will still be flooded, we've left that section as a concrete road so that it, 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 it'll be temporarily flooded. You wait for it. It subsides. The road will still be in the <coughs> condition. The rest of it is AC, all right? asphalt concrete. Pompeii, the Capua East South Road, same story. Where we need to raise it up, what we've noticed is that where it is different is a factor of poor drainage, yes, but it is also hugely a factor of movement of heavy duty trucks at, uh, um, I know the opposite word, sorry, but it's heavy duty trucks that drive across from the port area and they come through and then they turn in to uh, there where they park police military boats. All right? And you'll see that that section, they've changed everything to concrete and then the road is still AC. So we've just decided, you know, if, if, if they change their driveway to concrete, we'll change our section of the road to concrete. So we're putting a heavy duty concrete road and upgrading the, uh, the drainage structures <coughs> for that section, from the airport through to the first bend as you're approaching into town. All right? After that, asphalt concrete. Um, and chuck, it's all concrete. All right, the whole road is concrete. Um, so everything else that we're looking at, 
All the other projects, uh, INYET and so on, are all asphaltic concrete. Okay, so those are two different paving types, so you know what we're looking at for your urbanization.
All right, so that's just a quick walkthrough on how you actually look at the documentation that we presented to you folk um, online. All right, so it's very important to understand the drawings. Volume 3 is tied to the bulk quantities, which are in pricing, which is tied to the specifications, um, and they're all there. That's volumes 1, 2, and 3. All right, so they work together as a package. Okay. Um, starting with Kozrai. Okay, Kozrai, um, is that clear? All right, you can't really see the detail on it, but I'm going to talk you through it. So Kozrai is made up of two different parts. It's a rehabilitation and a reconstruction package. Um, if you take a look over here, you'll see that the Lady to Topo Road uh, runs from the other side at the intersection of the bank. You're all, you're all familiar with that intersection of the bank uh, just before you come across the causeway. It runs across the bank, down through to um, the, uh, just before, just past, sorry, just past the Guam, Bank of Guam, I think this is FSF, 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 FSF again. So you go through to, just past the Guam Bank, <coughs> this area here, and then it hits a, uh, a culvert, which dips down. And what I was telling you earlier is this area from here, all the way through to here, is a low-lying area that floods every year. Okay. And this section here is a full reconstruction. We've got some big work going in there. This area over here is rehabilitation. You come back out of that low-lying area and you come up to the school, you go around and you go up to the government offices. That section there is rehabilitation. So this contract is split into two distinct sections. What are we talking about with regards to rehabilitation, which is the bulk of the road? Rehabilitation, bulk of the road, if you look over here, what we're doing is we're using the in-situ material, all right? Um, we're recompacting it, and we're putting three layers of AC over the top of it so that it is going to be cut to grade. It's going to have a horizontal and a vertical alignment that works with regards to ASH2 standards, okay? But you're not going to be importing material for So you're going to be working with the material that is there, and we're going to be bringing in your asphalt, obviously, because there's no asphalt plant out there. Um, so I'm going to give you guys a, a chance for questions in two minutes. I'm, I'm not going to push on, but thanks for that. Um, and then we're going to, the, the width varies. Right? Our quantities are working on a 22 foot wide road, which is the average. Okay? So, um, the bill of quantities, the quantity that you'll see there that you're pricing up is an average of 22 feet wide. It includes for some cleaning up of the existing shoulders, but you're going to be sticking to the existing road edges, you're going to be sticking to the existing road horizontal and vertical horizons, pretty much all of the yellow that you see on the outline. Coming to the section where it's, it's, it's flooded, alright? Um, the flooded section, what we've done, we have a variable height, um, big box culvert type drains on either side. These are big, alright? These are, uh, off the top of my head, I think they're five and a half feet wide. What we're trying to do is, we cannot, we, 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 we could not raise the road. If we raised the road and we cut off to the level that we need to raise it to stop it from flooding, we would cut off access to all the properties along that section. That's FSM Bank, that's that whole little blue shopping centre on the one side. It's two houses on the other side. You can't do that. All right? Also, what we would do is if it then did flood, we would be creating a situation where we'd have some more big culverts going through, and those culverts would then just flood all of those areas. So we would have a fantastic road, and everybody would hate us. All right? So what we've chosen to do instead is we've put these, the, the concept is this. We put these two big box culvert type uh, 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 drains on either side, underneath the underneath the roadway, so nobody will fall into them. We've covered them with a solid metal door, okay? uh, tight spacing, so people can walk on it with flip flops, with uh, sandals. Oh, sorry, I know these flip flops. I'm South African. X. Um, and uh, we've allowed for a pedestrian area. We we cleaned up the road completely. We widened the road, and we have made it concrete. So the idea is this: when it floods, the water will go into these large box called the top drains and will drain off into three specific areas. We're looking at an area, a, a big culvert here just past the Guam Bank. There's another culvert just here, um, a, 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 a 
low lying point just before you start getting to, to a little shopping centre and so on. And then just past the shopping centre, before you climb up and go towards the school, there is another culvert. We're going to clean up the culverts. All right? The culverts themselves are going to have gabion mattresses. We put gabion mattresses in. So the approach to those existing culverts and the, 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 um, the, the entrance and the exit to those existing culverts will have gabion mattresses which will speed up the flow. We'll clean them up and put concrete uh, aprons onto them. So we're looking at speeding up the flow of water through those culverts. We're looking at catching the water in these large um, box type culverts on either side so that when it floods, it gives people a chance to get off that road section. Because what we've seen in the past is people don't have time and they suddenly get washed away in their cars. And I've seen photographs of the cars sitting way down in the bush. Okay. So, um, and these will also act as storage points for that water. So if you're driving on the road, it starts to flood, it, the water will be caught in these culverts and will be able to fill up in these culverts and drain off into the existing waterways that are out there. Okay? So we're not ripping up the road and putting in new culverts at the crossing points, there's no point. We're dealing with it all the way along the road. And the reason these are variable heights is because we need to get a 0.5 slope in there. So, and it's flat. So we've had to vary the height of the actual culvert from, I think it's three feet, so two feet, down to five and a half feet at, at, the, at the deepest point at the outlets, which gives us more than a 0.5, which is self scaling Okay. Um, this is for this grey section, just past Guam Bay, as I said, all the way through to just before you climb the hill towards the school. All right. Um, I'm going to stop there. Yeah. So you have a question? Yeah. Is there any sub-base work, either on the rehabilitation and or the, the, the more major work? Uh, the yes. Reconstruction. Is there any sub-base work to be done? Um, so for the reconstruction, we're anticipating that the existing layers of sub-base are going to cut down to those existing layers of sub-base. And we're probably just going to recompact what's there. We're not looking at ripping the subbase up and reworking the subbase, if at all possible. Unfortunately, it's an unknown. We, we've got geotechnical holes every half, half a kilometer along the road, and we've done some core drilling. What we've found tells us that it's good enough that we can, we can, we can, we can rip the top set of layers off, get to the subbase, stop, recompact, and then come back in with, with what exists and cover it with three layers of AC. If that changes, we will be in a position on site to assist with the engineering for that change. Um, and, but that will be a variation. That, that wouldn't be something which you're going to need to price into your price at this stage. Um, but that covered on the reconstruction. Uh, on the, okay, let's go to the reconstruction. Reconstruction is full reconstruction. All right? What's there is a mess. It's been inundated with water. Um, it looks like a road, but it isn't. Okay? Uh, not from an engineering standpoint. This is a full reconstruction. You're going to need to pull what's there out, decide if you're going to t cut it, spoil it, or if you and bring in new material, or whether you are going to leave it um, in situ, rework it, possibly stabilize it. However, there we did a slightly more intense geotechnical investigation. So we feel that the design does talk about the subbase in that instance, and it does take that into account for the, on the bullet quantities. Um, so again. Um, the bullet quantity speaks to that. The answer to your question is yes for that section. <coughs> However, being a concrete top, we think it's going to be more forgiving on the sub base. We just, and also because we're boxing it out with concrete other side, we're protecting it already in its position from excess water and, and, and movement. Um, so, so the answer is yes on the reconstruction. No, we really, really hope not on the, uh, um, uh, on the rehabilitation. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Martin. Uh, sorry, sorry. With the <coughs> design of your uh, box concrete drainage, what happens if there's <coughs> running and there's also clean time? Would that be able to accommodate the water to drain out properly? So, so what we've done a very similar thing in Chuck. Um, so the reason we're going with these big box culverts and we're going so wide, it's primarily for the king type. So as far as the drainage goes when there's flooding, it's going to flood the road. So the answer to your question is no, they're not good enough for the flooding, <laughs> all right? They are minimizing the impact of flooding, which is the best we can do without cutting off the properties. With regards to king tide, yes sir, that's what they're there for. They are, they are there so that we don't end up with king tide coming through the culverts and inundating the road. They have a place where the king tide can sit and, 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 it's, and it's stable. It's not going to sit on the road. Um, 
it is going to help hugely with the flooding. I think you're going to see a huge reduction in, 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 in any flooding that is happening there. But the intention here is to allow it to flood and move that water off as quickly as possible so that it can be accessible again as quickly as possible. Yeah. So, so the elevation is intended to remain as is? Yeah, we raised it. Oh. Sorry, we could share the mic if you want. No, no. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's good to use the mic so that people are yeah, like yeah, okay. oh. And then the so the elevation of the reconstruction is to is to stay as it is now. Yes, sir. Okay. And yeah. then the next question is aggregates. You mentioned aggregate issues in Yao, but Kusrai also has issues with aggregates. Yeah, we're, we're well aware of that. We. Um, we don't know. You, you know, um, we have specified the aggregates that are required for the road, so that is in the technical specifications, and we are obviously going to be depending on. Them. You want to? Yeah. Let me touch on uh, both the two big issues that that we've been struggling with for the for the years so far. All right, uh, which is cement prices uh, and aggregate. So I can tell you that what we've priced for in terms of our budget is uh, cement prices. We were catering for eighteen dollars a bag of cement, right? One in. Um, I know you all went through two jumps of two really big jumps of prices, January this year and early last year. So that's what we're catering for. And for aggregate, we're allowing for uh, full importation of aggregate. All right. So that's what the the bid documents cater for. Now. All right. Now, of course, your price is going to be more competitive if you think you could use local, but the concern with using local is you have to make sure it could meet the specifications that are there, uh, which is, I could tell you from the projects that we're doing in Kush right now, no, it, it, it doesn't, you know, in Pompeii, yes, yes, the Pompeii, Pompeii aggregates have been able to, to, to meet those specifications, but not Kush not yet, not true. All right, so for those, but even in Pompeii, we did allow for importation as well. But of course, the ability to get local that meets the uh, specification is going to allow you to come up with a more competitive price. Yeah? Okay, so I'm going to move. Any, any other questions on, on top of sec? Is that, is that all? You, you have with that? Okay. Let's go to your one. Oh, one more question. Yeah, okay. You'll have more detail later on, right? Yes. That's right. I'm just trying to do an overview. And then this afternoon, if you come back, we'll, we'll tackle the detail. Then I'll actually pull up the design packages. The rehab, are you going to allow reuse of the material that's there? So just mill it up and reuse it? or? Yes, sir. If we can. If, we, we can. Would, if, if it's possible. We are going to be having a lab, uh, a mobile lab in Coltrane. So if that is something which is possible in country, then we can clear them through the lab. Yeah. Then, but we have not allowed for it in our class, uh, in our in our quantities, in our DLP. Um, so let me let me put the other one. Another one? Yeah, the bring another one. Um, yeah, because I think I might have to come in on some of these things just to get clarity. All right. So um, the lab. Let me be let me be clear about the lab. All right. Um, the solution that we're catering for, there, there are two things, two, two problematic stuff that, that we have solutions catered for in these big documents. One is setting up a mobile lab on the island itself, so that um, and Larry, um, well, the two Larrys, Larry Adams and St. Nicholas, I don't know if Larry St. Nicholas is here, you all know the reality of trying to get tested enough where we have to send stuff to Guam and all of that headache and all of that. This mobile lab solution will allow at least one lab to be on the island, so you don't have to go and wait, you know, five to six weeks to get some sort of results and so on. So that determination on whether the existing stuff is fine, you will be able to get just a couple of days. You're going to have to wait to determine exactly how much you're going to have to um, compact, because it will just be a case of additional compaction and so on. But as Martin said, they will have a team actually giving you that support during supervision to, to assist you in terms of, 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 of making that determination and so on. That's the one side. The other side I want to point out is something that we cater for on all of the projects, 
which is a provisional sum for utilities. I want to be very clear about this utilities portion. This provisional sum, as you all know how provisional sums work, is basically a budgeted item we have in the bills. And once you implement, you basically ask permission from the client to utilize it. The utilities, we expect you to come up with a fit for purpose solution for the utilities when you actually start to dig on the ground. So you'll be working with the uh, utility companies and you'll be able to draw down on that sum of money in order to deal with the utilities. Because the problem that we've seen happen way too often is that we give you as contractors designs and then when you actually start to build, the different utility companies is like, no, 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 we need you to relocate this here, this there. So this gives you full flexibility to develop what we call fit for purpose so that you're able to satisfy what the, what, what the utility companies are looking for. All right? So to answer your, company, your question, Rich, it's yes, you're going to have to make an assessment of the um, standard of compaction that exists on the road, but you're going to have a mobile lab and a full engineering team on the ground to give you that support to make that determination. Okay? But as far as the BOQ right now, it assumes that that material is not used. Yes, sir. Yes. We, we've got a worst case scenario on the BOQ. Yeah. So, yeah. Can I ask one more question? Yeah. With the road going up to the government offices, how does that, yeah, how does that uh, tie in with the EMC cable that supposedly is going to be coming in? So the EMC cable, uh, you mean the actual utility runs that they're going to be doing branching off to the different stuff? So that's part of the utility provisional sum. So by that time we're going to be, because I already spoke to Eddie, and we already have details in terms of where those runs are going to be. So essentially, whoever it is, the, the money is already catered for in the bill of quantities, for you to basically allow for that. But the actual specification of the exact location, where the run is going to happen, that will be provided up to, to you, whoever the final uh, awarded contractor will be. Does that make sense? Yeah? All right, so the price is catered for up front, but the actual details and so on, that will be provided to the selected contractor to be able to come again with a fit for purpose solution. So utilities, so let me answer your question in a different way. Utilities, when we say provisional sum for utilities, that's power, water, telecom. Yeah? And water is portable water and wastewater. Yeah? Okay, so Martin, let's, let's go on to the Tafford South Bypass because I think it'll have similar questions. And just, just on utilities, it also includes an oil pipeline right. and, um, in Gangnam yeah. Bridge. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's, that's yeah. Right, Tufford South Bypass. This is a... Uh, uh, the road is not too bad. All right. um, so again, I just want to... Um, I just want to uh, touch on the rehabilitation. The whole road is going to be rehabilitation. Uh, rehabilitated. All right. What that means is we want to take off the top. So we want to make sure that the bottom has not got any failures so that we spot improvements and then we're going to put the top back on again okay with new material or if the lab shows that we can use the existing material existing materials okay <coughs> but we're going to keep it to the bare minimum so rehabilitation in this instance is really just using continuing to use the sub base that's there all the base layers that are there and putting three layers of ac over the top of it okay but there are going to be spot improvements, so we're going, to, we're, going to, we're going to take, and again, this is something which is going to come through very clearly in this afternoon session, traffic management. We're going to rip off what's there, we're going to take a look at what's underneath, do the spot improvements, and put it back, um, put it back in a way that it's painted black from start to, from start to finish. All right. Um, that's the whole road. Yes, sir. Uh, the three layers of asphalt so. The three layers of asphalt for the uh, rehab portions. Uh, what's the thickness of each of them, and, uh, and what's the mix design? Would the mix designs be the same on each one or uh, all three? Uh, thank you for that question. Okay, we'll get into the technical this afternoon, but just briefly, um, the the three are two inches deep each. So we were looking. We had the question come through our office as to whether we should do one lift of six inches, or whether we should do three lifts of two inches. And our materials engineer said that we are seeing a lot of failures because he was here and he took a look at the roads and we're seeing a lot of failures where there's delamination happening in, in, on the roads here. And he says that 
Counter to anything that I'm thinking of, all right, that delamination is a factor of taking one lift and doing it badly and not getting the compaction on that one lift. So um, we're looking at three lifts, minimum of two inches each, all right, um, with a, a, a binding coat in between, okay, which will allow water penetration, it will allow movement, and it will stop delamination. I'm a lawyer by training, just so that you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of pressing myself. But okay, all of that is, is, is on the drawings and it's in the specifications. Yeah. Yes, sir. Because the, the reason I ask, um, uh, sometimes you get exceedingly heavy loads, like container trucks and so on, fast and road loads. And uh, I, was, when I, was, I was concerned about the, the fact that with any sort of, um, with that type of loading under the excessive rain for and so on, uh, uh, what sort of exercise would they have? Um, it's reassuring to hear the solution that they're proposing. Okay, thanks. So, so if you stay for the afternoon session, we can get more in depth into the technical side. But yeah, thank you for that. Uh, any, any other questions on tough and slick bypass? It's fairly straightforward. A couple of things. Just remember what I, what I covered under rehabilitation. Clean our existing drains. I've been to that road. It needs cleaning. Um, uh, any services, I don't think there are too many services, but if you do come across any, they need to be moved, they need to be dealt with when you're ripping up roads. Um, you know, it, it, is, it is not only the surfacing, but we need to clean up what's there as well, because drainage is a big factor. And the drains are pretty good in top and safe pipeline, but we need to clean them up, what exists. Okay. Um, and then also remember we're going to be doing finishing it off with paint lines, signage, crossing points for pedestrians. So just be aware of that. We're going to put, wherever there's a crossing point, we're going to put um, solar powered street lighting. It is all on the drawings, and this afternoon we'll cover each of those drawings if you want to. But just be aware of that rehabilitation doesn't mean just the road. Okay, there's a lot more happening on, on rehabilitation. So, and it, it is in there. Um, we have put some provisional sums in for some of it, and for the others we may mention it in the bill of quantities. So if you stick with the bill of quantities, you'll be, you'll be good on the pricing. Okay, moving on from top and sack bypass. So that's done with Cosrae, and uh, we now move on to Pompeii. Pompeii is made up of two, two portions. Uh, lot one is the causeway road. Um, uh, can you see it? You're right. Okay, so lot one is the causeway road. The causeway road, um, you don't need to actually read any of that. It's just to show you that we've got two very distinct sections. We've got the rehabilitation section, once again. It is different to Top and Safe Bypass. I just want to correct myself. Top and Safe Bypass has got one layer of AC, additional layer of AC over the top. Okay. Um, Whereas the, uh, and we'll get into that this afternoon, but, but yeah, it's got one layer, and I, I think it might be a bit thicker, but we'll, we'll get there. This has got three layers, so the, all the Pompeii roads have got three layers of AC, two inches thick, with tech coat in between to, to bind the binding coats. Um, I think this is fairly straightforward, this is the important part. Coming out of the airport, the heavy trucks, the heavy duty trucks are turning at that intersection, and then they're driving down through to the first been in, in the road, okay, and you can see that that whole road has dipped as a, as a consequence of heavy duty equipment, uh, equipment moving up and down and uh, poor drainage. The actual existing drainage is not bad, the problem is the minute that road was pushed below the level of the drainage, nothing's draining. <laughs> All right. So, um, for the drains, being big U-shaped concrete drains are just sitting there stopping the water from going anywhere. So what we've done is instead of spending all the money on additional drainage, we're spending the money on raising the road as a concrete road, all right? Um, and sorting out the levels, adding to the drainage, because again, as you know, the drainage only starts halfway, I mean, it's about three, 400 feet away from the airport before you actually see any drainage stop. So we're adding to the drainage, getting, making sure that it drains through into those big box culverts that go out into, uh, into the, into the, uh, uh, the, the uh, mangroves on the, on, on the one side um, and we are putting <coughs> concrete in on that section. So what I've done is I've, I've just pulled out the extra cross sections just on that section so that you can see what we're talking about. Um, there's the rehabilitation. Here you can see one, two, three levels of tech code. We're digging down, we're pulling out what exists, we're going over in utilities, 
Um, we've got a particular cross-section on how you should be dealing with the utilities, especially the fiber optics that we have at the moment, which is in concrete, um, like concrete, uh, 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 concrete lined channels across the roads. Um, but you effectively, at the end of the day, going to be doing the same thing, pulling up what's there without messing with the sub-bases, um, looking at what's there, spot fixing it where you need to, and we've done a visual, so we've got a fairly good idea of where you need to. It is, it is in the cater from the BOQ. Spot fixing it, making sure that it's, 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 it's at one level all the way through, and then bringing back three layers of AC. All right? And compacting it, tech codes, compacting it, tech code, compacting it, and painting it back. I'm not going to go into more detail on the reconstruction, uh, on, the, uh, on the rehabilitation, all right? That's pretty much what we're going to be doing for most of the world. The first section, the concrete section. Let's look at that more in detail. We've got an existing concrete drain on the one side. As you come out of the airport, on the left-hand side, there's an existing concrete drain. On the right-hand side, you've got those oil depot, which has got a massive fence sitting right up against, hard up against the, the tar road. And you've got a little pump station as you drive along on the right-hand side. But the pump station is set back from the road. So we're going to be ripping out that road completely, re-importing material, okay? So that we're going to be redoing the base layers all the way through. What we are looking at doing is reusing the existing material, reworking it, bringing that thing back in as a sub-base layer, okay? So, so we would like to use what's there to bring it in as a sub-base layer, why throw it away? It doesn't make sense, and where are you going to throw it? This stuff's dangerous, all right? From that point, we're then going to build it up with imported material to, uh, to, to the correct level. We're going to be building up the, extending the, um, extending the side drains all the way through. You'll see the, the, the cross sections as they go. There's side drains and there's less side drains. We're going to be widening it. We're going to be sorting out the shoulders. Um, inside the oil depot, where that little pump station is, the drain at the moment stops before the oil depot. All right? We're going to be taking that fence, relocating it temporarily, bringing that drain all the way through to the airport intersection, and replacing the fence in the same condition that it's in at the moment. So, little things, watch out for security, you may want to just <coughs> allow for that new price, because it's, you know, it's a factor. Um, and then we're going to be bringing in, like I said, reworked material that exists, bringing imported material, all the specifications are there, uh, compacting it, and then putting a concrete top onto the top of it. Okay? Um, traffic, really important. We're going to be dealing with two sides of the road, so your construction process is going to happen one side, because we can't close that road. It's, it's, not, it's not realistic, so you have to work one side. Uh, we've got tar bars designed in on the concrete, and then you work on the other side. You're going to have to protect those tar bars, you can't let them rust, and then you pour concrete onto it. Little technical details like that you've got to take into consideration. It's all in the BOQ, all right? Um, but that is the thinking here. We're going to be raising that road in the order of about three to four feet, at the worst case. Um, and at the best case, it will taper into the, to, into, the, into the corner and it will taper into the intersection at the, at, the, at the airport site. So those are the two time points uh, on the drawings. Uh, the only other thing, that, two things that need to be mentioned, utilities. Um, we've got some utilities crossing. And the other one is um, allowing you guys still to get into your property on the one side. Right, um, and allowing for the ports on the other side where there's an existing concrete. Okay, any questions on this? Good. Okay. Uh, just one, one, one question on the live stream that came through. Um, for Leather Causeway to Tofu Road, the speaker mentioned using the native material. Please confirm if the sub base is actually the native material. So, I, uh, I mean, for me, I think this is something we could check. Um, uh, I because I can tell you now, it's, it's, yes. it's coral. It is coral. It's coral. Yeah. Okay. From the jet I can show you the photographs. It's okay. Coral. All right. Uh, so, all, uh, as I mentioned, all of these questions we're just verbally answering today, but we will be uploading our final report next week with all of the questions and our formal responses to, to each one of them. So wherever there's additional information that we need to get, we'll go back and pull the relevant information so that we give responses to all the questions, both here today and on the live stream as well. Okay? All right, back to you, Mark. Okay. 
Um, all right, I'm moving on from, 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 uh, 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 from the causeway. And this is probably going to be probably the easiest one to explain, probably the most difficult one to build. <laughs> all right, these are the urban roads inside, uh, not this particular one, the next three, sorry. So the next three, we've got not Civil Works 2B, it's three roads, Palapala, Nantualik, and Pix Road, all right? Starting with Palapala, am I pronouncing that right? Can somebody correct my pronunciation? Pila. Okay, Pila. my apologies. But anyway, you know what I'm talking about. All right, so, um, so this, is, this is the first of three roads. All right. What makes these difficult is not the construction. Same story. We rip out what's there, we keep the base, we spot fix it, we raise where we need to raise little bits and pieces, but effectively we put it back at the same level that it was before with three levels of AC. Okay. So nothing complicated about that. Where the complications coming on these three roads? We have to tie into existing drainage. All right? We can't mess with the existing drainage. We've got to clean it up, we've got to tie into it. We have to tie into the existing sidewalks. We have to clean up those sidewalks, we have to tie into those sidewalks, we have to put them back. Um, the, uh, and this is the all three of these, of these next set of roads. Utilities are a nightmare. All right? At the moment, there are sections there where you're driving and you suddenly hit a pothole and you realize it's because ETA has just put three layers of 50 mil and they've gone around the manhole. Okay? So you, so, so, and, and it's really difficult to deal with that sort of thing. So, um, again, it's a provisional sum that we've allowed, so you don't need to go and price that. But be aware of that when you're looking at your methodology and how you're going to deal with it. You've got water lines, you've got surge lines, you've got um, telecommunication lines, old telecommunication lines, as well as new telecommunication lines in the middle of those roads. So, and they all need to be raised when it's finished. Um, those services need to be at the same level as the finished road level, not below. Okay. You're welcome to use the existing infrastructure that's there, so if there's a manhole, you can just add a bit of concrete around the top of it, take the lid off and put it back on. So you don't need to price for that, there is, like I said, a provisional sum, but just be aware of that from a construction methodology. Otherwise, uh, the other big challenge with the next three is your uh, traffic management. Okay, so you're going to need to manage the traffic, we can't close any of those roads. Uh, yeah, yeah. This this road. Um, okay, so that's generally for the next two. This one and the next two. So I'm not going to cover that again in the next two. Let's look specifically at this road. On this road, as you go down to the main intersection at the bottom, no, is that the main intersection at the top? As you come down to the main intersection at the bottom, it's, it's quite a steep road. Okay, this is the ADB offices down here. So you guys all know it. Okay. Um, as you go up the road, on the right hand side of this road, the, the road used to be a lot narrower, okay? And it used to have a drainage ditch on the right hand side. And what they've done is they've come along and they've just filled that drainage ditch, up Mary, and then put a pavement outside of that. That's how they widened the road back in the day, right? And you can see it, there's a, there's a, the, 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 the solid curb line is running all the way up the road. They've got the in full drainage ditch, and then a step. We are taking all of that dropping it down and taking that out, okay? And that's why you have two cross sections. The one is how you deal with that drainage ditch on the right hand side, and the other one is just the general section where there, where there isn't that drainage ditch, okay? And then we are putting it back in again so that we don't have that strange step. We're putting it back where it is, and we're putting it back to the same levels. Um, but just <laughs> important to note that this has an added complication, which is that, that full in drainage ditch. Okay, questions on this road? No? Okay, I'm going to move on. If you have any questions on this road, the next two roads are almost identical, so you can ask them at the end of the next two roads. Uh, All right. Martin, yes. maybe just go straight to pick circular. Pick circular, okay, yeah. We'll go straight to that. Okay, so this one is the same, except it doesn't have that strange drainage ditch on the side. Okay? Um, I do need to just cover one thing on this one. The one thing about this road, so this is, the, this is what is fondly known as the bypass road. Okay, what's particularly difficult about this road, this road's challenge, I think you all know where this is, right? Um, is all of these are businesses all the way down here, okay? Finishing up at the American uh, housing estate, which is really cool. Um, you've got a major bank happening over here, which is their main parking access, okay? So just be aware 
Traffic management here is a nightmare. All right? And when you do this road, you've got a steep drop off on the right hand side, and it's pretty level on the left hand side. Water management while you're constructing the road is a nightmare. We can't have any of those properties flooded. We can't have any of those properties access cut off for longer than a morning. So, Sorry, what road is that? So this is the bypass road. This is uh, Nantualic road. So if you go past the... Um, this, this is by Namiki Lodge, uh, coming out to the bar that, that connects from Namiki Lodge, uh, going to FSM bar. Yeah. yeah. You've got the post and telecommunications, big satellite dish down here, and then you come up the road. It's a really good Japanese restaurant on the right-hand side, and then you... It's, it's at that junction. Do, do you want to know where Freddy's building is? You good? So you know how busy this gets. Okay. All right, I think, I think that's, that's, that, that's the critical thing on, on, on that. That is something to take it back here. It's fantastic. Okay, Pix Road. Pix Road has seen quite a lot of um, rehabilitation that has just come along and they've put, they put tar over the top. They put AC over the top. Sorry, I used tar until next. I shouldn't. They put AC over the top and they're generally doing a, 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 a two to three inch lift each time. And they don't do anything except put the lift on. All right. So what we're seeing all the way along Pix Road is quite a bit of spot improvement all the way through the road. Okay. Um, so as we come from the junction going down to Seven Stars Hotel, you know where that is? We get into the next corner. There's, there is a, a, a retaining wall on the left-hand side protecting somebody's house. There is a culvert on the right-hand side which doesn't work. All right. Um, and the road itself is just, it's, it's all ending up in that poor guy's lounge. Okay, so it's just slowly disappearing. So that sort of thing, we're gonna, we, we've identified it, we've allowed for it to be okay, you're going to need to rip it up, you're going to need to fix it up, spot improvement, get it back to a level. All the way through, we've, we've looked at these, we've allowed for different cross-section scenarios, as we go through lots of services, um, and uh, uh, at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is get a road level that is fixed and is perfect on the sub basis. Some of them will be left in place, some of them will have to be redone. We've identified where, okay? And then we're going to put laptop over it. But that's the critical thing is we're not just resurfacing this road, okay? None of these roads. We are fixing what's underneath, we're ripping it open, looking at it, fixing what's underneath, putting it back to where it was, and then resurfacing so that it comes back to the same level that it was at before, and not the same level that it's at now. Because the level it's at now is too high. It's just had a whole lot of things put on it. We are basing our levels on the drainage. Right? Because we want to tie to the existing drainage. We don't want to spend money on the drainage. We want to stop replacing drains. So, okay. Um, I've got three cross sections here. Uh, did I try to No, I didn't. Okay. So, just so that you know, these are the three cross sections. The one cross section specifically tells you how to deal with the utilities and it's those big concrete crossing utilities. I think it's fiber optics that they're putting those big concrete crossings. The one cross section is primarily just for that. How do you deal with that? You have a cross section, you have details, you have all the information you need on that. The other cross section is what do you do when you get having to rip up bits of road and replace it? That covers that. And then what do you do just on the general? It's the same cross section you're going to see all the way through. Our three layers of AC need the up as it is. Okay. You know, I just want to mention one more thing on picture. Right? The last thing I want to mention on Pix Road. Pix Road has got schools, um, and, those, and it's also got the world's best track and field soccer team um, up here. Right? So um, these all have parking areas, lay bars, places where you can put your car over, that are outside of the, the black road top that we see. So your contract, yes, is the black road top, but there is a provisional sum, and there is also some quantities for clearing and rehabilitation of those labels. So you don't need to resurface it, but you need to clean it up, you need to bring it up, you need to rework it so that it's, it's, it's workable. We don't just fix the road, we want that whole road corridor to look beautiful and to be workable. Um, right? Okay. Yeah, uh, two, two things I want to, I want to touch on. Um, uh, for that, that big circular road in particular, uh, as, you all, as you all know, a lot of the challenges comes from the ponding of the water as well. All right, especially right opposite the field in front, Ministry of Education there. So there are design solutions there to be able to help with that. 
Um, the actual construction, though, uh, I, I want to recognize PTA that's here. Uh, thank you guys for coming. Um, and I think there's a theory of building roads and there's a reality to it. Uh, and I want to invite you all just to say a few words in terms of when you're all paving, how you deal with the utilities, how, how do you deal with that reality on the ground? Because I know it's not easy and I know over the years you all would have uh, you know, developed some ways to deal with it. So how, how do you deal with those utilities and so on? Thank you. Uh, when we, there are certain road projects that we work on, what we do is uh, we contact the uh, telecom to identify their line and PVC. So they come and identify it to us and then we go ahead and, and they're all stand by one. To come up with something and then you're there to repair it. Okay, so uh, as this is for the Pompeii routes, um, before we transition, um, there any questions specifically on these routes? Yeah, Rich? So oh. there's clearly some drainage issues on, on the fixed road yep. by, the, by the tennis courts and the swimming pool. Yep. So are we going to assume that there's no drainage work to be done there, or there is provisional No, there, yeah, there, there, there is sporadic drainage works that specify the independent documents that keep us up for all of those all, all, all of those problems. So, but it's not major, but it's tough to at least just allow the water to run, because the issue that was identified was the ponding of the water, right? So it's to stop the ponding from happening, right? So, so that's catered for, and that's in the, in, 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 in the documents, yeah? Um, so I do have one sensitive question to ask, all right, um, and I'm going to go around to, I'm, I'm seeing three contractors here, uh, so I'll, 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 I'll leave it open for anyone who wants the question. So you have asphalt roads, all right, uh, the majority of roads in Pompeii is asphalt, right? Where would you all propose to get the asphalt from? Larry, you want to? <laughs> PT. <laughs> so, is anyone considering setting up their own asphalt plant? So let's let, 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 let me hear from. Uh, Not at the moment. Not at the moment. Yeah. How? So, so in your mind, PTA is going to function as a sub, as a sub to your providing the asphalt. Is that is that the solution that you're seeing? And I'm saying that because. I'm going to ask you this question at the end of each one of these packages, and I don't think the, the answer is going to be the same for all of them. So at the end of Pompeii, you're basically going to have PTA provide that, that, that fee. Is, is, is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes. Because of budget constraints, but it, it's also an um, interesting question that I have is, are there future roads? also being looked at, or is it just this, and um, how far down in the future are you looking at potentially other infrastructure roads? Because if it's just this in the next 10 years, mm -hmm. then obviously we need to work with PTA to have an existing facility. Yeah. Uh, so, no, yeah, yeah. That, that, oh, that, 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 <laughs> yeah, that, that, that could tell a little about my theory. <laughs> Just you know, drawing on what um, the Assistant Secretary for Infrastructure said, um, no, this is just the beginning, and um, we do anticipate a fairly massive road program um, over over the next five, ten years. I mean, um, the, the Shrimp Project um, is one of three. Um, we have Prime and Score, uh, which are even bigger than um, this one in terms of the um, size of the investment. And um, as you know, Larry, um, we made a big breakthrough on the compact um, with the U.S. in which we, we got the U.S. to agree that we remove the Tier 1, Tier 2 um, sort of prioritization uh, from the previous compact where we had to focus on health and education. Now we can do roads and bridges also. And we, um, we based on, on what we're hearing from all the states, um, they will be um, giving high priority to roads and bridges. So, in addition to the World Bank, in addition to the ADB, we also have the compact. So, I think that um, it is reasonable, very reasonable to conclude that um, there will be justification to look seriously at investment in asphalt plants uh, because there, there will be enough work 
um, to justify this kind of investment. So, yeah, thank you. So, PUC is not here, but I know that in previous years they were talking about major upgrades to the water and sewer infrastructure. And a lot of those upgrades that they were looking at are underneath these roads. Has that been taken into consideration? Is there a timing issue with that? Um, okay, so it's, man, utilities is a nightmare. Um, so what we've done is we've put a fairly large provisional sum in, especially for the Pompeii roads, almost as much as the roads, for the utilities. Uh, so, so the idea is that um, when, when, you, when you win the project, uh, you're going to engage with utility service providers, and you're going to find out what their forward planning is, and either they will come on board and bring that forward planning um, closer to when you're actually building the roads, they'll see the potential in, in, in saving themselves money and themselves money um, in doing it at the same time. Or they won't, but they'll share the plans with us um, of what they're planning to do, and then you can make provision for that, either through possible box culverts crossing over the roads and so on. But we put a provisional sum in for, for that, and uh, um, and we're gonna we're gonna like I, I think uh, we're gonna be having a full team of engineers in each state. So we're not gonna. What I've seen here is I've seen people tend to run all of the supervision contracts in Micronesia from one. So you'll have somebody parachute in, give you a bit of a run around, and then parachute out again. And then uh, I've seen that, and and it's just the reality of, of being remote. That is not the intention. The intention is to have a lab established in each state. That's a mobile lab, it doesn't do everything, but it, it'll do enough. It's, the intention is to have a full team of engineering staff in each state supervising these contracts. And the intention is never to try and punish you as the contractor, but the intention is to work with you to get the roads done. All right, that's, that's how SMIC works. So the, the whole idea would be um, to, to take on board what the utility service providers are planning, um, to either assist with that design, bring it forward, let them build it, or not, and then allow for provision on it. Um, and then, what's really important for you as a contractor, you will have a fully qualified um, contracts manager that knows the FIDEX 2017 contracts very well, so that if it isn't dealt with as part of the construction process, it is not going to come back and bite you. Right. As the contractor, you're not going to have to come back right at the end in your defects liability period and fix something that they've now ripped up of your road so that they can put a sewage pipeline through. Right. So we're going to also be managing those contracts very, very carefully together with you. And I think that's really important because what I've seen here is that um, the supervision consultants parachute in, give you the run around, parachute out. They don't understand the reality on the ground. We will be established here with you every step of the way to take on board what you say, because you have the experience working in Micronesia, we don't, all right? And take that on board and come up with practical solutions. More than that, I can't promise, because it's utility service providers it got to the point where we couldn't even design anything, we couldn't get any information out of them, so we just allowed a provisional sum, and a chunky provisional sum. Does that answer your question? Okay. Come on, everyone? Okay. All um, okay, Chuck. Um, so, I'm going to whiz through this one. I know we should be taking a break, but we just don't have the time. Okay. Um, so, Chuck is made up of one contract. And that contract is concrete from start to finish. It's made up of three sections of road. Those three sections, um, it's not overly clear here, but this is one section. All right, which, no, let me start at the beginning. This is one section which runs from the Mormon church and it comes all the way down to the intersection over here um, and stops at the junction, all right? Um, you're tying into existing concrete road at the top. The existing concrete road is 18 feet wide. The new concrete road is 22 feet wide, okay? We cannot fit that road without destroying people's houses if we want to add sidewalks and drainage. So we've taken the drainage, we put it underneath the road, okay, underneath the sidewalks. So that's the first thing. Um, we have got sidewalks from start to finish all the way through so you can go for a nice run in the morning and finish up here at the church on the other side, go from church to church. Okay. 
Um, so uh, um, you're tying into a slightly smaller road, but then we're going to be making it a nice big road to the junction, so that by the time the guys get to the blue lagoon, they're in a good mood. Okay. Um, at the junction, we've got a small piece of road that comes down and ties in at the fence. Now, I have had a big fight with my design team in the Philippines. All right? They seem to think that it finishes up at the front door of the Blue Lagoon. It doesn't. That's their problem. We're finishing at the security fence, which is quite a bit before. <laughs> you know? So just be aware of it. So we're stopping at the security fence. There's a little bit of a junction there. Um, and this is 18 feet wide. Alright, so we're going to now go to a smaller width, but it is still got drainage underneath, still has side roads, and it is still concrete. And then from the junction, we're going all the way up to Witcher. This section is the section that's really a problem. We've got quite a bit of wash away on the edge here, on the coastal, coastal protection. Um, we have a section just about a couple of hundred feet, what's it here? I think it's about 200 feet in, we all of a sudden you drop off the planet. And then, and then you're sitting with the ocean above you, and you, and you drive along, and you can see that's all been washed away. We're raising that. We're raising that quite a bit. Um, but we've got to be careful because there are some houses there. Okay. Um, and then we get to the bottom of the hill. We go up the hill. And if you don't have a four-wheel drive at the moment and it's raining, or even if it isn't raining, you won't get to church. Okay. That was bad. So um, I'm, what we've done is we've kept it at 18 feet all the way through to the junction of the church. Concrete all the way through. Quite a bit of raising up, plus we've got coastal works happening here where we're going to be protecting that, uh, that coastal line so that we don't continue with the washaways that we're currently seeing. Um, and we are cutting off one house, so we're going to upset one person. But we, so we <laughs> Which I think is pretty good considering how many houses there are. <laughs> no, sir, I don't know who it is, but I think it's the president. <laughs> No. <laughs> My design team's on holiday that week as well, so... <laughs> Don't call me, I'll call you. <laughs> we have made provisions, so what I've tried to do is, when the, when the design team gave me that, I moved the road away from that house. So it will give them an opportunity. They're not going to see the sea anymore, so it's no longer that beautiful beachfront paradise. But they will have access. We, we, are, we have allowed them to build quantities for the concrete crossovers onto all the properties. We all clean it up. The moment that little house is a mess, it's, it's, it gets flooded every, you know, every year. So they will, the, the whole overall standard will improve, and we're not going to impact on their property at all, except the road's going to be here. But we're not going to impact on their property, and they will have access the whole time. Okay. Um, okay. I have done the cross sections on this. I think it's important that we take a look. We are doing a similar thing to what we're doing in Kojiro, okay? The big problem we have out there is the king tide, okay? So what happens is the king tide moves in and inundates that area. It washes away the coastline, but it also covers the road and it floods everybody's properties. And we don't have lagoons. In Samoa, where we do a lot of work at the moment, Samoa has this thing where they, have, they cut out these lagoons at the low points where there's king tide, and it allows the water to flood in and doesn't destroy anything, and it just goes back out again when the king tide's over. We have created big box culverts, don't look over here, um, big box culverts to cater for that water. So the intention of that box culvert, you can see we've got um, coastal protection, rock coastal protection over here. Okay, we have given you a specification of what we want in that. And then the intention is to allow the water from the king tide to flow into those big box culverts so that the water gets trapped in the box culverts until the king tide goes down and the water comes back out to you. Okay, that's the theory, that's the intention. It is a concrete road. If it does flood, it's not going to get damaged um, and it'll be for a very short space of time. Um, so there's the subsurface drainage underneath the sidewalks. Here's a box culvert over here um, at one or two of the low points so that it allows for the king tide without changing the road levels too much. Um, there's another one down there which is uh, showing the coastal protection and then um, all the way through, again over here, um, subsurface drainage going up to Witcher, all the way through we have sidewalks um, and we have these fancy pants concrete um, crossover points which if you look at the drawing it's fantastic, every one of these dimensions are variable. Okay, so it's great enterprise. Um, but we have put something into the bullet quantities for that. Um, these are specifically so that we don't cut off access from any of the properties. We have raised 
all of the roads levels by uh, I stand corrected, but I think it's just under a foot. Right, so we're looking at we're looking at in fact no, it's half a foot. We're looking at about 15 centimeters. Sorry, I don't think it's centimeters. So we're looking at about half a foot. And then the section we were raising it quite a lot, we're looking at um, in some places uh, get that right, four and a half feet at the worst case. Okay, so it's quite a bit. It's, you know, about as high as my broken. So okay, um, all of the pavement designs are here. They're the same thing, all right? And it's a full reconstruction. So, so, so your question about bringing in material, you're going to probably have to bring in material into it. Because you've got to rip that whole lot up, sub-base, uh, base, course, um, all the layer works that you require, plus the concrete over the top. Okay, it's full reconstruction. This one's a monster. Okay, um, only good thing is not too much traffic on the road, so a little bit easier as far as that goes. Okay, questions on truck? I think I'm, I've covered that. Okay. I find the reconstruction stuff easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you rip it up and replace it with what you know how to do. Um, Can I just have a yes, question? Sir. Do you have a provision where if either a contractor can uh, uh, secure a land for uh, stockpiling? Because yeah. I know each of it's really, really much yeah, that's in the private building. Is it in the building? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. Well, the preliminary is set up. There's a That's whole true. description of, of what they have to do to set up uh, in, in order to comply with the bank requirements mm -hmm. uh, of like temporary space and this sort of stuff. So there's a line and for that where they could price for what that setup will cost and everything. Yeah. Contract. Yeah. Shall we move on? Hold on. No? You can't tell me you all have no questions. Yeah, no, I can, I can <laughs> see the questions in line, but I can't see the hand. <laughs> Contractors online? Um, no, just keep it on. Just keep it on. Yeah. Right. Bulletproof vests? Um, <laughs> no, so what we do, we do issue with a with a with a with a with a with a punga, with a you know with a bush knife, so that would be about it. <laughs> Everybody has one. Has it pay? <laughs> Press it. Uh, with regard to because you got the little gun which is a hotel. Yes, sir. for a traffic management plan. However, to answer your question, we've got tar bars across here, so this is not a mass concrete thrown all the way across the road. It's got a break in the middle. So the idea is that you're going to construct left, and then you're going to move, construct left, and then you move across the road. So that, that's the idea. We do, we have in our methodology tried, you know, maybe you can give us just a brief, because that is an important thing for all of us. Yeah, sure. Sorry. Yeah. Look, look um, as far as integration and the design, considering those things, we, we've made it completely possible so that uh, uh, essentially you build one site, um, you do what you need to there uh, until you can get it to a point where you can have traffic over it and move your operation to the other side. So really at the end of the day, and this applies to all of these sub-projects, um, you cannot afford to just set her off at the start and the end points of any particular road. Um, not a luxury of uh, bypasses, so that will be a very important part to actually see in the documentation that comes through. Uh, the preliminary side of it would be in your bid, um, looking at uh, submitting in some, um, uh, some general traffic management plans, and that's a very important item if you win the job especially, uh, to be included uh, under your contract management plans, in particular your sub-plan. Uh, Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Um, in, in line with that, um, have you guys or, or has there been any provision made for, because if you go through a, com a community management or community, uh, basically getting the community to buy in, it'll be, make it a lot easier for contractors to be able to yeah. access. To, so are you going to have somebody that's doing that from Chuk State or from Chuk? Um, so, yeah. Okay, so yes, this is, um, we, we're going to have a, um, a, a, a 
environmental health and safety officer on board. We're also going to have a social safeguards officer on board in each state. Um, the social safeguards officer is going to be a local chookies, all right, um, and they are going to be dealing with the community. Every single one of these roads, we have had full community consultations along all the roads, three consultations, an initial one, a general one, and then we went household, house to house to house. We spoke to the people, we got their input um, on, on all of these roads. So they are aware of the roads, um, they have been spoken to, um, and they have also had their uh, concerns brought on board as part of the design. So we've got that as far as our environmental and social management plan goes, which has been submitted to the bank for approval. Um, but we're also going to be looking very, and I'm going to be running a training session on Monday for the contractors' environmental social management plan. And there I'll set up what, what our involvement with that will be. But to answer your question, definitely, it is, it is a huge concern of ours because the bank will not release finance, as I said at the beginning, without us coming up with a plan before we start actually working on the roads. I'm right, Peter. And uh, we have this all over, all over the world where you know, bank finance stuff. They just, people brush it off and then they, they don't get the finance. The, the finance is there, but they can't release it. So, so yes, and we are going to have, we are specifically, um, we are specifically looking at manning it with locals. Chookies, Yappies, uh, somebody from Pompeii, uh, somebody from Kosovo. Um, so, the uh, best we can do at this stage. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, just, just to add to that, from the government side also, uh, Larry, um, we also have a structure in place, all right, in which uh, uh, the Chuk state government um, is fully you know, involved in the project, all right. We have focal points um, who are part of the government, um, the Chuk uh, Department of <coughs> Transportation and uh, Public Works. And uh, in addition to that, um, we have a, a project steering committee uh, where we have representatives of all the state governments um, that sit with us at the national government. And um, one of the functions of that is to help us to resolve um, uh, any issues that may come up with landowners and, and so on and so forth in terms of interacting with the local community. So in addition to what the, um, the consultants will provide and so on, and the environmental and social management plans, etc., and as you said, the environmental and social uh, safety office, I think you said, um, we also have structures within the government uh, to facilitate and to address, to help the contractors to address any um, issues that, that, that may come up. Yeah, because we do understand there will be a lot of local issues. I mean, this is not the first road project um, that we are, we are implementing in Chuk. Uh, we know Rob Solomon, <laughs> you know. <laughs> we suffered a lot through the Weno Road. Um, that existing concrete pavement, 4.2 miles, I think it was, uh, many of us suffered through it, and we're still suffering, by the way, it's not over yet. Uh, as we know, right, check out. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, so we have that experience also. And, uh, but yeah, we do have the structures in place, uh, both under the World Bank and um, ADB, um, to really help the contractors to resolve these issues as we move forward, yeah, so thanks. in context with yourself, Larry, the contractors are going to have the price for that, right? Because you're going to have to prepare what they call a contractor environmental and social management plan, where exactly what you just described, in terms of your effort in that, we expect that you price that, right? So with all of that support that you will have, don't not price, you know, and say, well, it, that, that's everyone else's problem. No. How the international banks function, it is the risk of the contractor to propose a plan that makes sense, just as you're describing, because you're basically walking through that process in your mind as to how it's going to work. You're basically going to put that on paper, and you know, if it is you need equipment or resources and whatnot to, in order to facilitate that, then that price is expected to come in uh, in this bill of quantities itself. All right, but what we just described is the support mechanism that we will have around that to support you, yeah? Now, it's not that you're preparing that plan as part of the bid. Just be clear about that, right? You're just pricing for it, yeah. right. And volume number five in the bid documentation is the environmental social mitigation plan. 
So you don't have to make it up, you don't have to think it up. It's there, it's in the, it's in the good documentation for you to turn to volume number five. You can see what our idea is from the consultations, how we're going to deal with it, and then you can say, you guys are talking rubbish, you've never been to Chuck. <laughs> right? This is how we're going to deal with it. Okay, so I, I get that. And like I said, we're learning as well. We want to implement this, we want to build the roads, we want to make it work for you guys. All right? Um, no, we can't put six foot high fences with domination and, and, and guns, but you know what I mean. So take a look, it's in there, part of your pricing. We, we're trying to make it as simple for you as possible to price this so that you can win. Um, okay. Uh, sorry, before we leave, Chuck, I just wanted to make one additional point. Uh, sorry. <clears throat> before we leave, Chuck, um, just, just to make one additional point. And just to sort of, you know, whet your appetites in terms of work in Chuk. Um, in addition to what we're doing on the Shrew Project, the ADB, um, in terms of, you know, the road going from the Mormon Church towards Blue Lagoon and then on to Wichel, we will be, um, we are right now in the process of finalizing the science and building documents and also the environmental, site-specific environmental and social management plan for an extension of the road going in the other direction towards the Poo, uh, Poo River Bridge. Um, I think it's 1.5 miles. So I just want to let you know that those of you who are thinking of maybe, you know, taking on a lot in Chuk, uh, maybe through joint ventures um, in order to enhance your capacity, there will be a substantial amount of work in Chuk. Uh, and the, um, the other one, we can't talk yet about timelines. Um, it depends on um, the World Bank team across there. Um, all right, Nick and, and Kitty, but um, we, we are optimistic that before the end of the year, I guess, uh, we will be inviting bids also for another segment um, going the other direction uh, towards Poop Bridge of 1.5 miles. So this is going to represent a fairly substantial amount of work in Chuk. And it will be similar, very similar. Concrete pavement, huge drains, I think in yeah, one of them 10 feet wide, um, and so on. So uh, just to let you know that, and I mean, as you think of your own strategy, of um, how to you know bid for this work, how to get organized, whether through joint ventures or pooling your resources, looking at you know what you can do um, to enhance you know your own capacity. Just bear that in mind that Chuk will be a substantial package of work before the end of this year. All right, so I just wanted to make that point also. Thank you. I will go into more detail this afternoon. Uh, I'm going to move on. Um, so. It's 20 to 12. Uh, may I ask, uh, um, I think the people on camera, they can go and get coffee or whatever, but I'm going to ask if we can push through till half past four. The reason why is in the next 20 minutes, I can finish the two roads in here, I feel, and then we can look at half an hour's worth of Ganyan Bridge. So if we can push through to half past 12, then we'll do lunch from half past 12 through to half past one. Is that okay with everybody? So, uh, Martin, I, I want to give a suggestion. Could we go into Ganyan Bridge now, and then whatever is left, what is anticipated to exist when we're done with it, okay? Um, so these spans over here are 60 feet wide spans, so we're going to have three separate 60 foot wide spans. What's important with Kenya Bridge is we are trying very hard not to do any dredging, so at the moment the intention is to cut the causeway back, not dredge, but cut the causeway back to a level that is only, it's, it's actually cleaning up what's there. So what's there, we're dropping it down about a, a foot. All right? um, so we're really not doing a huge amount of work on the, on the, on the, on the bed of Ganya Bridge. Why? Because we don't want to impact on the, uh, on the fish and so on in the bay. But we do need to cut the causeway back. We have a, a building structural plan that you can take a look at at the end of the design package. I'll show you where that is. Um, which shows you how you can uh, tackle this without having to float a big draw rig on the water, without having to do dredging of what's happening on the water. Um, but you can do it pretty much from the causeway. So, so, um, so that's Ganyan Bridge at the moment. All of this is in concrete. Uh, you've got an oil pipeline going across. You've got a surge line going across. 
uh, you've got water, you've got electricity coming over the top. There's a lot happening on this little bridge structure. At the moment, this bridge structure is a steel structure that if you go underneath it, you wouldn't even want to stand on top. Okay. Um, so that's coming out. All of that's coming out. The, the, the big gantry, new gantry bridge, bridge that's holding that oil pipeline is coming out. Um, we need to demolish it in a way that we can take it, we can take it through to a landfill site somewhere, which at the moment the nearest one is, uh, I think, 15 miles away, which is 15 kilometers. It's 15 no. something. I think it's 15 kilometers. So, it's, so you've, got to, you've got to look at that. We have put that into the, the BOQ. Um, there is a landfill site down here on the corner, but that is not for this type of landfill. Okay, so the landfill site that we've, we've been told is, is usable is out by the airport site. Okay, um, so you need to take a look at that as far as haulage goes and what you can do with that old rusted steel metal and so on. Okay, um, causeway, the actual job itself is split into three parts. Okay, you've got the first part, starting at the top, you've got the road. Okay, so you have a road that takes into consideration this junction, all the way through here, all the way across the, the, the new bridge, and finishes up at this junction. These junctions are actually less than a meter above sea level. This whole area here just suddenly just, just drops. Okay, so we need to raise it without um, cutting off access to properties. Um, and, okay, so that's the top surface is the road. The next surface is the bridge structure itself. The bridge structure is the causeway, the structure of the bridge, everything that sits above the substructure. All right? And the substructure is paths. Bore paths, because we haven't, we've done, there is two very deep bore holes that have been drilled several years ago, which tells us where the rock level is here, which is at about uh, 100 foot. All right? That's where the rock level is. However, we haven't done anything further on these sides because there's boulders and all sorts of things in the actual causeway that stop any sort of realistic drilling and exploration out there. So we've allowed for worst case scenario and we've allowed for bore piles rather than driven piles. So you don't have to pre-manufacture your driven piles, come out here and find you only need to put two in and then you hit solid. Okay? You can drill it, you can put your bore pile in and you can, put, you can fill it with concrete. Now, um, so what's important with the ball piles is if it goes down 20 meters or it goes down 100, sorry, if it goes down 20 feet or it goes down 100 foot, you get paid on the ball pile. So that's the substructure. Okay, you get paid per foot on the substructure. Okay, you then have the superstructure, which is the bridge proper. And the bridge proper is um, r beams, pre-stressed r beams coming across three sets of them. We've got uh, 60 foot, 60 foot, 60 foot, roughly. All right, I'll show you the drawings in a moment. And then um, we've allowed for uh, um, a services area with um, a gantry on that so that people can walk along and deal with the services. And we've allowed for um, a curve so that um, underneath, underneath the, the substructure and the superstructure, you're going to be lining that with, um, with rocks. Okay, again, full set of details all the way underneath. And we tried not to raise the causeway itself. So where we tie into the causeway, we've curved this bridge so that when we tie into the causeway, we are raising the causeway as little as possible. So we're trying to tie back into the causeway at the outside edges of the bridge. And then we've got the road surface that goes over the top of all of that. That makes it nice and smooth, so you don't do that. Okay, let me show you the drawings quick. That's, uh, these are the drawings. Um, this is a picture of the existing roadwork that's there and the oil pipeline that's going across, which has its own set of footings and so on. They all have to come out. Okay. Um, on the road, so this is just the road. Okay. We've got three different types of pavement. Here they are, uh, sorry, two different types of, of pavement. Here they are here. Um, all the details for the paving on the road is there. Obviously, this is paving that goes over the new bridge area, so it's going to be over concrete. It's different to this area over here, which you're going to need to do road works. You're going to need to do sub base, base, um, lay works. Here's a picture of the actual bridge itself in cross section. So, this is the road works. I'm sorry it's not that clear, but you will get a copy of this where it is clear. It's just because of the, the picture. Um, and the road works itself. 
varies in thickness because this bridge is these long straight sections, so we're going to need to vary that road work to give it a curve that, that doesn't bounce around. Also, the lead up to the um, to, to the, the the new bridge means that the road raises. And when the road raises, obviously we then have the footing that starts to run away from us. So we're going to be really careful with that because we can't let that footing run away too far because just off here, it gets to, well, I did the back of the survey, I think it's 3.8 meters, um, about five meters off the edge of that footing. So um, all of that is taken care of in the design drawings um, and, and, and the information we need for that. Um, and then the typical cross-section of the road. What's important here? We are putting a sidewalk all the way along this road. We are putting lighting all the way along the road. We are um, putting in uh, 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 traffic calming on either side, but we need to take a look at exactly how we're going to deal with that. I think at the moment the traffic calming is stop signs and uh, rumble strips, because we're not allowed to put um, speed humps in here. It's illegal, apparently. It should be. Um, so, <laughs> So we've got traffic calming happening in there. There's a lot of bits and pieces. But ultimately, it is, it is um, really just, it's a road going over the top of the substructure. That's the easy part. Let's take a look at the substructure. OK. Um, sorry, superstructure. My, my apologies. Substructure is the, is the part. So OK, superstructure. Let's look at it in, let's look at it in, in, in uh, profile first. Um, so a longitudinal section going across the bridge, you can see we've got um, a, a, a pile on the end, a three piles on the end, three piles in the middle, three piles in the middle, and three piles on the end. 60 feet across each. The r is going across all three of those. Yes. And this little animal over here. So this over here is a moving concrete slab. All right. So it pivots as you get to the bridge. So it allows for settlement. I don't know if you've, if, if you, if you've got an AWAC bridge, I think that's the only place I've seen it, but apparently there's a few places. You get to the bridge and you go thump, and you lose the bottom of your car as you get onto the bridge. And you think, wow, what happened? And then you get off the bridge, okay? And then that's even more scary. So this, this doesn't do that. This actually pivots um, with the bridge. So as there's settlement, at, as you're coming on, this whole concrete slab is designed to actually move with that settlement over time. So you never have that, 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 that issue um, with the approach rates. Um, okay, they, these are pre-stressed girders going across in the six minute. Six pre-stressed girders, all right? Um, I know there is a pre-stressing, approved pre-stressing place in Guam. I'm not sure if there is anything here. I'm pretty sure there isn't. Um, however, if it works out better for you financially to establish one in yet, then take a look at that. It's just my advice, because you're going to be doing six of these times three 60 footers all the way across. So it may be worth your while to, to, to look at the specifications of that and, and establish something so you can do your own free stress beams in country in yet as part of the process. Otherwise, you need to look at the transportation of that, which gets uh, it, and transportation is more expensive than anything else. Um, okay. Another interesting bit that we've put into the design is this um, uh, 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 plinth that basically holds the pre-stressed beams on top of the on top of the poles. Okay. It's extended out for two reasons. The one is it allows for all of the services to be uh, uh, dealt with. On a, on a gantry that's built there, but also it is integral in the design so that it protects this bridge structure from uh, uh, if there is a, a, a tsunami or if there is a, a, a storm surge and it goes in and it comes out of the bay and something hits that bridge, this is designed to withstand those forces. Okay, so it, it is a practical, it's a practical addition, but it is also a safety addition. Okay. Um, all right, we've got concrete balustrades either side to stop people from, from going fishing. Um, and otherwise, it's fairly straightforward. I will cover utilities later. The bottom slide down here shows you the construction process that we've been looking at. And this is a construction process we feel will work from an environmental point of view. Does that mean?
It is. Yeah. Can I use the other one? Where is the other one? Battery. Battery is good. I think the battery is Okay, so the, um, the construction process we've looked at is trying to keep you guys away from the water. Okay, so the idea is that you would set up your crane um, or your digger up here. You will construct the center area so you will remove the existing bridge structure. You will dig into the causeway from the land so you don't need to float anything. You'll be sitting here on the land, on the causeway. You'll dig it out. You'll prepare everything in the middle. You'll put your piles in. And you will put your first, uh, uh, your first set of our beams across. Then you will move back. I should have put them the other way around. Sorry. Then you will move back and you will do the same thing for the next section. All right. What that allows you to do is you don't have to bring really expensive equipment in. Um, and you can, you can quite, quite honestly, we've tried to minimize the size of these I beams. As you know, we had a monster before. So that you can lift it with a normal crane, all right? And you can see the type of crane we're looking at is a mobile crane. You don't have to go and set up a massive crane. Um, so we've tried to look at the practicalities of it. However, this is our idea. As contractors, you guys, like I said, this is a team building effort. The idea is to build a bridge, not to be right or wrong, okay? So if you have a better idea, if you can think of something which is, 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 is going to work better for you as a contractor, you can put that into the bid, all right? Because you have to put a methodology statement in there. This is our idea. We thought of this. We think this is going to work. But you're welcome to think of something different and say to us, I have, I have a floating crane. It'll be easier just to demolish it and build it. OK. All good. All right. Um, piling rigs. Again, you can set your piling rig up. The intention is to set your piling rig up on dry, pile down, get your piles in, and then remove the material. OK. Um, right. Underneath, they bore piles, so you're going to bore down until you hit the hard. Your worst case scenario, because the, 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 the testing was done right in the middle of the flow, your worst case scenario, which is what we've allowed for in the BOQ, is 100 feet. All right? I can't tell you more than that. It, it may be less as you come closer to the edges. I know in geology as well as what I do. I'm telling you now it's going to be less. We've allowed for worst case scenario. Okay? 100 foot. Four parts. Um, okay. Structure. I don't think I've got another slide. Um, I think it's time for some questions on that. Yeah. Larry? So, um, are those, those piles need to go down until they get bit wrong? Um, yes, sir. Uh, I think the, the design is that they go down to, until they hit bedrock. The problem that we face here is we try to keep it to the bare minimum. Um, so we're trying to keep the openings as wide as possible. So we only have really three sections. Of support for this bridge um, and these sections on the end sorry let me just say the sections on the end we're not putting head walls on this bridge what we're doing you can see here we're covering this with rock but we are hanging the the this, the concrete head wall we're actually hanging it off the pile so it's not that the head wall is going to be built like you're used to with foundations going down it's actually we're going to have three piles and everything's going to be hung off those piles and then covered up with rock <laughs> so yes i think the answer to your question is we have to go down the line. Um, or, if not, there's a full design team on site. And on this one, there will be a structural engineer involved so that we can look at what, if you're going down 150 foot and you're not finding anything, we need to look at it. So, yes, um, at the moment, our intention is rock. If that changes, it'll change on site depending on the conditions. Okay. There's boat traffic that goes under there. Is that been allowed for? Um, so yes, sir. Under, under height of the bridge and raised? Yes, so the, so, so the under height of the bridge, so if you look at this picture here, the new bridge finishes, the underside, the soffit level of the new bridge finishes at the top of this grey gantry. So well, what hasn't been allowed for is any additional depth. And the reason why is because we just don't feel that it is warranted to dig it up. Because once you get in here, this is just only a foot higher than what's inside the bay. So what's the point of digging a hole and having the guys get stuck on the other side of the bridge? So we've looked at, the, we've done a full bathymetric survey of the whole bay, and we've lowered it slightly from the bay levels um, underneath, but we're keeping that to bare minimum. As you see with the construction process, you'll just be scraping it up, digging it up. This at the moment is pretty hard stuff under there. They've covered it in rock. 
um, and it's got a lot of concrete lying in there. So, um, soffit level, it's going quite a bit higher. Um, it's going to 9 foot, or is it the moment? Is it, it's going to 12 foot. At the moment, I think it is sitting at uh, 8 foot, 7 or 8 foot above, above sea level. So, it's, uh, it's, it's quite a high. I know from the picture, it finishes up on, that, on the top of that grade entry. The concrete girders are pre-stressed. Yes, sir. And any any provision for any special provision for seawater or corrosion or anything like that in those girders? Um, or yes, there they will be. That's why it needs to be from an approved pre-stressing construction, the pre-stressing uh, 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 factory, pre-stressing site. Um, from what I understand, um, the, the, the stressing that happens in those um, is a particular type of steel and it is coated. So, uh, Peter, you would be a better one to answer that, but I, I think from my show is probably... Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I, could talk, I can speak to that, all right? So, yeah. Well, 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 yeah. Um, so, we want to make abundantly clear, uh, because it's something that became contentious a year ago, uh, we actually had to hire two separate uh, qualified uh, US-based structural engineers to comment on this, which is that um, the best way to control corrosion, all right, uh, for out here is actually the concrete grade and the cover, all right. So for the pre-stressing, that is what. So be clear in your mind. Oxycoated rebars don't help. Be sure of that, all right. And I can say that with certainty, all right. Uh, in theory, it helps. But the reality is it doesn't help. The actual way that's recommended by ACI, uh, the American Concrete Institute, is controlled through the concrete grid and the concrete cover. Uh, and pre-stressing is actually one of the best ways to do it because the, uh, for pre-stressing you actually have the largest amounts of cover and strength of concrete that is done, controlled within a manufactured environment. All right. And then the other thing is uh, that pipeline for oil or fuel fuel line that goes across there, is it's contractor's responsibility to keep it open and functional throughout construction and then to move it? Yes sir. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, that pipeline is used temporarily, so they don't actually, it's not, it's full, it's not full of oil, alright? It is used um, on an ad hoc basis to pump oil across, okay? So uh, we have been in touch with the utility service provider and they are quite happy that we engage with them. Um, that when we are, that's all it. So we engage with them that when we are constructing, they will switch it off, and then we will move it, and they'll switch it back on. But yes, sir, the answer to that is we do need to allow for that for a temporary pipeline to be put in place while we construct the bridge. Um, and the other thing is we are moving the pipeline from this side to the other side. So the, 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 the final product we're trying to put all the services on the side away from the ocean so that we don't see the same damage that we got in 2012, I think it was, when that wave came through and took out most of, most of uh, Colonia. So, um, the answer to your question is yes. The good news is, we've allowed a really chunky utilities provisional sum for that, because we realize it's, it's, it's not going to be easy. So, um, you won't have to price it, it's a provisional sum. Yeah. I'm just highlighting the other good news on the subproject too, is that... Oh, thank you. Um, okay. Is that the road is actually already uh, not being used, the bridge is not being used, so you've got complete access to the site that you don't have to worry about maintaining live traffic. Yeah, that's true. That's um, uh, Martin, I, I, will, I will still say that, that because your comment about the water will um, be, be, in, be mindful that while the work that you're doing on the approaches will be unencumbered, when you're bringing in the girders, you're going to have to have a traffic management plan. But your traffic is not land traffic, your traffic is water traffic, right? Because you know all those things that come through there and whatnot. So it's not going to affect it, but in your contractor environmental and social management plan, you're going to have to talk about how that risk is going to be managed uh, to make sure that the boats still have safe passage within that channel. Uh, but when you're bringing in the girders and whatnot, how do you allow? Because you're not going to be able to cut off that view completely. All right? But that is already mentioned in the environment ESMP, which is uh, volume 5, as Martin says. But your CESMP is where you're going to look at what is there and see if you want to come up with anything slightly different to add more value. Yeah?
Okay, I, I have a lot more detail on this, but it's, it's obviously in the detailed design drawings. Um, any other questions on the general... I mean, it's, you know what, the reality is it's a fairly straightforward bridge. You know, we haven't done anything fancy yet. Six girders going across three points, two points in the middle, four points, sorry, two points in the middle, a jump off on the one side, jump off on the other side. Try to keep it simple, no head walls. Um, the environmental management plan, we try to keep that as simple as possible as well, by not dredging, because all of a sudden we need all sorts of sieves and so on, and, and we try to keep it as simple as possible. Um, but you're right. Utilities, utilities, utilities. They, they're more of a headache than building anything. Okay, any other questions on this? Okay, I've got a, I've got a question from my Can side. Can I ask you yes, a question? Yes, yeah. Is, if you said that you move the pipe from the other side, right? Yes. The pipe will have a bend. Because uh, it will come like this, right? Yeah. And then it go around like this. That's correct, yes. So yeah. you have to provide for and the fact that it has to be strong enough to go yes, around the That's right, yeah. yeah absolutely. Um, so, question for you guys. Did you want me to cover the two roads in here? Okay. Ah. It won't take long. It'll take me 20 minutes and then, and then we can break for lunch. Yeah. Should we do that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, these are... Okay, these two roads are a little bit of a pet project. In fact, yeah, it's a bit of a pet project for me. Um, this particular road is going to benefit the community more than I think anything else that we're doing out here. Okay. Um, at the moment, it rains. I don't know if any of you have been down to Tomo um, Centre, but when it rains, you can't go there. All right? You just slide all over the place, even in the road. Um, so what we're doing is we are regrading this road. It's a full reconstruction from start to finish. What's important here is at the end of this road, when we get into the little town, at the end of the road, we are putting together a, uh, this is the school at the end of the road, um, and we are strengthening the pavement, we're putting a bus lay-by area here, and we're putting actually a, 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 a bus rank for the kids to get off. We're putting sidewalks all the way through the pedestrian crossings to the school. So we're trying to keep all of the traffic away from the school, obviously parents can come and drop their kids off. We're trying to keep the heavy duty, the traffic, the buses and so on, away from the school. And we've been given this land by the municipality. Um, so there's no problem with land issues. Everything you see here has been agreed. Nobody's going to attack you on that one. Um, and then from there, down here, sorry, it starts at zero because it's north. But from, from that point there, the, the road surface changes. So again, we've got different cross sections. Um, we're putting drainage in this town from start to finish. It's going to be um, um, uh, stone pitching, so we're not going expensive. All right? And we're also trying to make it so that the local people can clean it themselves, they can maintain it themselves, they can, they can look after themselves. This is a fantastic community that I think will do that. You know, some communities won't, but I think this particular community is well run. It's got a fantastic uh, uh, senior member of, of, of looking after it, of the municipality there. Um, it's got the clinic in the area, so I think I think we've got a good shot at making this a, a really good road um, all around. What's important on this road? This road goes through some very deep cuttings. Okay, the whole road is basically in cutting. Even the sections that go over the top, they're in cutting. Okay, it's got a pipeline, an existing water pipeline on the one side. We have designed so that you don't have to touch it. So from the utilities point of view, you're not touching the water pipeline. It's got an electrical uh, uh, set of poles on the other side. We have designed so you don't need to mess with the electricity. So you won't be cutting this community off from fresh water or power. All right. Um, our design, however, takes into consideration two things. One, this horrible red stuff, which is actually fantastic sub-base material. All right. But you need to. It is going. This whole road is going to require imported material, and I don't think yet has imported material. Uh, has has has, um, has material in yet? I think you have to bring it in from from here. From Palika. 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 Anyway, it's my pronunciation. But you've got to float that material in. So we are looking at bringing an imported material on that. It is all specified. The other thing which is important is we've got some really large box culverts going through here. So we need to deal with the drainage. And because the whole road is in cutting, what's happening at the moment is it rains, lands on the road, it just goes into the side drain, and then it fills up. Okay. Um, and all of this material gets washed away down into the bay area on this side over here. Okay. So we're stopping that by putting these large uh, drainage culverts uh, across 
and then doing the road on top of that. So we've got a cross section that deals with how do you deal with the road as you go over these large culverts. We have a full section in the design for the actual culverts. We've got a full set of design detailing how you build those culverts, what we're looking at specifying. We have drainage drawings on this for what are you planning, what are you planning on doing with the side drains, how do they fall, where do they fall, what are the different runs and levels. Um, it is a full reconstruction. Um, two different pavement types. Um, we've got one at the entrance, which is a full depth reconstruction. This, this pavement coming across through to where that starts over here is a reconstruction as well, but it's got less AC over the top. It is an AC road, by the way. And then at the end, full depth reconstruction. Again, more AC, heavier duty, allowing for the turning of vehicles. Okay. Um, traffic management is a huge problem on this, um, but two things. The one is the people on this road want the road. So they have given us, in writing, permission to cut into their properties. Okay. Not majorly, we can't go and you know, really trash it. But our limiting factor is a power line on the right. Sorry, up chain is power line on the left, water pipeline on the right. We can't mess with those. So, um, really, again, traffic management plan is how are you planning on doing this without cutting the whole road off? And personally, I don't see this road being built one side and the other side because of these big box holders that are going across. You can't do that one side and the other side. You have to do that. So, you are going to need to factor in some diversions. On this. We haven't designed for diversions. I'm just saying that my thinking on this as well as um, Goggle Road is factoring some form of diversions, put it into a methodology statement. If you've been to that road, you'll know what I'm talking about and say this is how we plan on dealing with the traffic. It is a very wide road at the moment. At the moment, um, some of those places, the actual road width from, uh, from Parkland to electricity pole is 40 feet. You know. 30, 40 feet. The road itself, when it's finished, is 22 feet. Okay. Um, and but like I said, lots of lots of full, lots of wide, uh, uh, full material going in. So so you've got to look at the tow line as far as that goes. But you could probably put a slip road all the way down the side if you set it up properly. Um, okay. That's that's me done on Tom Road. I think. Let me just quickly take a look if I've got a second set. Yeah. This is the cross sections I was talking about. Um, this is for the bus phase area over here. This is for the culverts. You can see full set of culvert design details. That's for the culverts. This is the standard roads uh, where we're going into, into higher full, where we've just got lower full, uh, and again, some more bus bay detailing up on the top over here. Um, any questions on, on Tom and work? Yes, sir. Did you say most of it was cutting? At the moment, most of it is cutting, so when we build, it's going to be mainly full. I have no idea. Where is the disposal site? Yeah. No, what, what, what you say is that what you will have to do is fill it. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. is natively known was a lot of cutting, but you don't have any cutting to it. Yeah, right. sorry, so my, my whole job is yeah. 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 No, sorry, there's no cut to spoil on this. Mm -hmm. um, if there is any cutting, it's going to be on the top of the risers, and we've allowed for a bit of a mass hole diagram, so we're going to maximize the use of the existing material into your sub base. Because like I said, the material's not bad for a sub-base level of material. It's got, it's got a lot of, uh, lot of steel in it, a lot of uh, iron ore in it. That's what's giving it that red color. So it's pretty good for that, but it's useless as a material for a road because it's slippery when it's wet. It goes like soap. So, yeah, so we're going to do a bit of cut to fall, but the road as it stands at the moment, as you get onto that road, you immediately see you, you're sitting in, in, a, in, a, in a ditch all the way down that road. So, no, it's going to be imported material, lots of fall. It's all in the BLQ. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, okay. Moving on. Goggle Road. Probably the easiest road out of all of them um, is Goggle Road. It's why the people do not mind if you cut into their properties. Um, I am not sure where you're going to set up camp, but there are a lot of opportunities all the way through there. There's, uh, you know, um, the, the, the community wants us to do this road, so you've got really positive, strong feelings from the community. You're jumping off from the existing toll road that comes down through the mountains and then becomes really, really bad, really, really poor conditions, um, and then becomes dirt, uh, becomes a dirt road kind of just past, I think it's just past the school, just past the College of Micronesia. It's somewhere here, becomes dirt, and then you've got a really, really good, well-cut gravel road running all the way through to the junction at the end. 
We are anticipating that you're going to be using a lot of the existing material. We have tried not to change the levels of this road at all. We have cleaned it up. We have put in super elevations into these curves on this side using the existing material. So if there's anything you're going to cut, you're going to fill. Okay? Um, the material out there is not too bad. There is a lot of fill material that exists on that road. It's not actually a red color, strangely enough. It's a, it's a, it's a good quality. It's actually a good quality material. We have done testing. We will get the full geotechnical report on that material. And you will, like, like you said, in yet on, it will be an established road uh, mobile, mobile layer. This one, there's some sidewalks that are going in. Um, there is, it's an AC road. It's 22 foot wide. It's got, um, if you look over here, uh, we, we've allowed for some drainage in the cutting areas, otherwise the rest of it we are not allowing for a huge amount of drainage, official drainage ditches, but you're obviously going to need to clean up the site and ensure that that water can run. It is all on the drawings. Um, it's a full reconstruction, sub-base, base, uh, all your layer works. Um, yeah, any questions on this? What's important to note is it's lot CW4B, okay? So there's two lots to one silver works package. So when you're quoting on this, you're quoting per lot, but you are going to be signing one silver works package. So again, am I correct? That's the understanding I have. Sorry. So it's one silver works package for both the roads. Yes. So yeah. it, 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 it's one package. We'll, we'll go into this tomorrow for, for the different packages, but it's one package, but you can bid for a single lot as well, or you can bid for both lots, and you can also decide to bid for multiple packages. But we'll go into that in, in more detail tomorrow. Okay, I am done. You'll all be happy to know. Um, are there any further questions at the moment? If you think of any, um, if you think of any, we can start the next session off with those questions. If you're going to come back for the next session, the next session I'm going to go into more detail on each of the uh, of the lots. Um, the next session will be two hours, and we'll be done. So by three o'clock, uh, half past three, because it's now quarter past twelve. So by quarter past three, we'll be done. If you want to come back for the next section, session, please feel free. It's lunchtime now, we've provided lunch for everybody outside. You're welcome to just help yourself, Shankara. Um, so just, just, just before we, we release everyone for lunch, I just want to make a couple of comments. Um, one, which is that um, in YAP, definitely you're going to have to bring in uh, your aggregates um, in order to, to do your repairs to the subbase and so on. Uh, we also, as Martin mentioned, we're going into the technical engineering details this evening of each of the lots. So there's a deep appreciation for uh, the work that you'll be pricing for. And tomorrow we're going to be starting off with the Woolbound projects. All right. So I want to be clear with you all in terms of what tomorrow is going to be. All right. So we're going to be giving you an overview of all of the Woolbound opportunities that's that's going to be coming up. I'm going to be talking about the Woolbound roads projects. Um, and then Sergey is actually going to be coming in to start the procurement sessions, which is getting, telling you and explaining the how, all right, how you actually sending bids. It's not, there's one thing I want to make clear, it is not like your traditional compact projects. So how you normally submit bids for compact, the international banks are different, all right, and the main difference is the forms that they give you. All right, and Sylvia and our guys are going to talk you through those forms so you understand how easy it is to fill out and what sort of information they'll make. All right, so today we're just focusing specifically on making sure you have a deep appreciation for the ADB strip project works, and then tomorrow we're going to give you a light overview of the World Bank program to come, and then we're delving deeply into the procurement side of the conversation as well. All right. Um, as, I said, as Martin said, any other questions? We, we did see some more questions online, so we're going to be responding to those this afternoon as well. Um, but we want to release you all for lunch, and we're going to be coming back at 1. Uh, 1 p.m., right? Yeah, let's come back. Is that okay, lunch for 45 minutes? I think it's enough. I don't know how to eat. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so it's, it's 12.17 now. So, um, 
right? So 1, 1 p.m. we'll stop that, all right? So we'll see you all this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. 
Matter about India. JP.
hotel uh, in Egypt. Now, we did cover almost everything we planned to do today, this morning, as you would have sensed with the intensity of the discussions. So what we want to do is just uh, bring the conversations to a close now, but we restart at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. The next step that we were going to do this evening is the bill of quantities. We're going to schedule that for Monday. So it's going to be a bit by bit. That's a very important one that we need all the contractors to be here for. All right? So, um, so we're going to reschedule that out and we're going to send something formal on the live stream uh, uh, and to all the contractors via email as well. All right? Uh, so we just want to make that point. All right? So we'll restart at 9 a.m. in the morning. The whole of tomorrow morning is World Bank, the World Bank projects. Uh, so we would like you all to return tomorrow and then we're going to talk about the procurement side of things, which is how you actually send in that bill and so on. All right, well, PTA in particular, the SMAC team wanted to meet with you all and just discuss a few things with you all. All right? Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, I will. 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 Yes, I